back in May for the constitutional reform. And um, we got that finished and then we came back to the tribe, tribal council. And we got, a, uh, got it approved through council to go forth with your um, approval on that. And we did identify a task force. And the task force at that time, we asked council, anybody who wanted to be involved to be on a task force. And I think we had um, five, five, uh, five people volunteer, and that was Robin Tapio and Lisa Jumpenigo de Leon, Stephanie Leisure, um, Tina Mardanian, and myself, and uh, attorney Diane Zephyr. So we've been having uh, Diane uh, help us, and she's been doing our um, resolutions at that time when we did go after funding and uh, requests and contracts that we needed to um, prepare. So she, you know, worked with us on all the all these issues, and um, and we did at that time um, have our task force begin the opening extended dialogue with all citizens in order to arrive to a consensus on how we should develop the surveys and um, collaborate with the native um, nation rebuilders in the development of the survey. So we did um, work with a lot of people. We had numerous meetings, numerous sit downs. We met every week on Wednesdays at 8.30 in the morning and we were very consistent. We kept our time and um, meeting over all of these. So it was a lot of work we put into it. And I know there was a lot of research that was done prior. So um, we kind of, that's how we came up with the strategic plan because it was already in place. We had uh, rebuilders that already had all this training in the past to do all this <clears throat> on constitutional reform. So we had a, a vast knowledge of people that um, participated in this effort. We also had, um, in September, we had meetings with the youth. We worked with the tribal ed department and worked on getting the word out to our um, youth through the schools and to set up all these um, presentations as well with the adults, you know, with our tribal members, we we organized and set up schedules to go out and present all of these um, surveys to the people and let them get involved in what they would like to contribute to the uh, constitution, constitutional reform, whether they want it change or not, you know. We just gave that opportunity to, to the people to voice their concerns. <clears throat> Does anybody have anything that I missed? So when we went out to the uh, districts, we started in November and we met in the nine districts. We, as Jackie mentioned, we met with our youth. We also met with our people who had knowledge of the treaties. And from there, um, that was a total of 1,299 participants just going to those meetings. We also met with the colleges and the classes regarding constitutional reform with our young adults. And so with that, um, in this process, you have to keep in mind, in that strategic plan that you approved, is that we developed teams that would go out and present the information. And these teams, come from our rebuilders as well as from our local people. And with that being said, that's where the budget was needed is to for the materials, the supplies, um, to be able to provide a meal in the community. And so we would hire local caterers to bring in the meals. We had also hire um, uh, in regards to rental space in the districts. And so all of this was a part of those community meetings and, and that was the participation that we got from the community meetings. And that would have been 10% of the eligible voting population. 
You heard earlier Mr. John Long give you um, enrollment information. When we requested that information from the enrollment office, at that time it was 40,801. And what we understood is that 19,000 resided on the reservation, 21,000 resided off the reservation. That's 51% of our enrollment population. And so with that, we wanted to do a broader reach. And so we went ahead and we went door to door, boots on the ground. And we knocked on every door in the districts. We even had meetings in Rapid City with our membership who wanted to participate. And so with that, we also had an online survey on the Facebook and on the webpage. And with this door-to-door -door effort, we had 1,444 participants. So in regards to that, we met 14%, hello, 14% of our population on the reservation. And so as a result of all of that data that was collected and compiled, and then de-aggregated with themes as to the people's input, these are the results, the amendments. And the document that you have in front of you shows 50 amendments to the Constitution. And keep in mind, we were in conversation with BIA, regional office, so that we can move this process forward as the people requested and so that was the steps we took to come to this point to present to you council what the people want in the revisions in the amendments to the constitution and if you noticed in there things to highlight is it includes our culture it includes our language it includes where we come from and more importantly our values so in regards to that, this is what the people wanted. We have one of our rebuilders who's been a part of this process since day one and also working with our youth because our youth had a lot of input in regards to some of what they would like to see in the future as far as education and so forth. So I want to turn it over to Ms. Nakina Mills. Uh, good afternoon. Um, again, um, humbly ask for your um, I'm very grateful and honored to be able to be here to speak before you on, on the experience of being able to be a part of this process. Um, it was, it was for me, it was very educational. Um, before this, I did not even know our constitution. Um, so, <clears throat> so it was an honor to be able to be a part and try and help and educate um, the community members, the youth, um, even the elders. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to go to Kyle and Wombly this past weekend um, to again share um, what, what we had come out of the surveys and the input that we had gotten from the, the people. Um, and so some out, I had just this, um, an awesome experience this past weekend with the elders. Um, they, they shared a lot about um, you know, their frustrations and things with the current um, constitution and we shared um, with them some proposed changes to the Constitution and it was very they they came in and weren't really open to signing um, petition after sharing the proposed amendments and how what it could possibly look like and and talking and discussing in a good positive way um, some of them signed the petition um, so it, it has been a really um, great experience to be able to get out there in the community and to hear what the people want in the Constitution. Um, something, something that um, the, the four prior amendments um, 
the, uh, some of them didn't even know the Constitution, so it was really a great opportunity to to hear their input. Um, we did we did surveys. There's the, uh, there was a list of things that they had asked for, um, like separation of powers, uh, the four year term, staggered terms, um, qualifications was a huge thing from the people. Um, quali qualification requirements, um, and you'll see it in the proposed amendments. Um, <clears throat> the Rapid City people, the <laughs> Rapid City um, um, tribal enrolled members really spoke up um, and, and asked for, um, asked to be a part of, their, they are our people, so they asked for some way to be included um, in this process, so we, so we did that. Um, again, uh, thank you um, and, and for allowing me to be a part of this experience. Um, so during that time, we've been meeting consistently and documentation of every meeting that we did have. We documented, we had it um, with uh, KOLC. Uh, they, they, we had a Zoom meetings every week. We would Zoom in as a conference call. So all those are being recorded as we do um, our meetings and even in the districts. Uh, we had a contract with uh, KOLC to um, have all of this recorded for record because you know we feel that this is a model what we're doing today, our tribe is um, making history to make this constitutional reform fit the people's needs. You know, that IRA constitution doesn't include our culture, um, anything like that, who we are. So that was a lot of concerns that people um, voiced in these meetings. So, you know, based on the surveys and and all that that was compiled, this is how we, the amendments came forth, you know, and there is 50 of them. And last uh, constitution, there was 17 articles and um, there was some stuff that didn't really need to be in there. So it kind of like made it come down to like 12 articles now, you know, so those are some of the um, things that we did come across and the changes that were proposed. So these are proposed changes by coming from the people. And, you know, I know that uh, we had questions, you know, there was concerns that tribal councils sat on the task force and did this, you know. But in the Constitution, it does state that it has to come from council. And, you know, our only involvement was to keep the process going to ensure to the people that, um, that we're not going to, you know, take five, six, seven, maybe not even get it done. But people felt the urgency. You know, we, when we went out to a lot of um, district meetings with the people, a lot of elders were there. And they said they've been waiting for something like this for a long time. So they said, you know, our elders are passing away and there's some, some day they, they probably wanted to see this and they never had that chance. So, you know, this is the opportunity for us to give our people that voice now. So, you know, with that, um, um, I'd like to make a motion to, to um, approve these amendments to go forward to, for a secretarial election. So, you know, that's my motion. We have two questions before. Okay. Sure. okay. Chancey Wilson and then Lydia Bear Killer. Um, my, my question is, at the last council meeting, I thought you said that it was recommended to do like four, five, six amendments, not 50. I, th I thought it was part of the conversation at the last, at, at the last council meeting because 50, voting on 50 amendments would overwhelm the voter or, or, or some, something like that, if, if I recall the last, at the last council meeting. I think that was just um, out of con, you know, like uh, conversation, but nobody made a motion to that. No, no, to, I know it wasn't a yeah. motion, but I, I was thinking that was part of your report. Please use your microphone. No. Oh. I was thinking it was part of your report. Yeah, um, the task force meets 
every week and we invited people if they had concerns over the constitutional reform. We always said that, you know, everybody's invited. We go on a radio every Tuesday um, for people to come to our meetings. We say we're having a meeting every 8.30 every Wednesday. Come in if you have concerns. But, um, you know, a lot of people did come in, you know, in uh, coming in and voiced their concerns. And um, so I think that it was just in conversation, but nothing was really t taken action on. I would just like to add to what Jackie said. All that was was for signatures, but we got through our attorney that we just needed one signature, not six or seven or 50 of them. We just need one signature per person. And it was, um, they let us know. That's not, that's not my question. My question, my question was at the last, your last, re, the, the last council meeting in, when was it, March or April, that, uh, that, that there was a recommendation or something that there was to vote on five or six of the top amendments so that you didn't overwhelm the voters when they went to the polls of doing 50, 50 amendments. That, that was my question. So just for clarification, that was a discussion that was um, kind of on the side and, and it was the, we had a few attorneys helping us move through so there wasn't any conflict within the article revisions. And they just mentioned, you know, most amendments that were made within the Constitution is usually around four to five. However, you had Rosebud who did 23 amendments to their Constitution. It's just based upon what the people want to amend within the Constitution. So at that time, we haven't, we did not correlate the data yet. So we didn't know, you know, we didn't know how many amendments were gonna come down the line. It was based upon the response in the surveys and from the people. So with that being said, that's where it came. All 17 articles, the people want it changes, they want it update, they want it to revise the language. And to include the culture, that was one of the biggest things is that our people said, we need to include the culture, we need to make this government, you know, for the people, by the people. And, and first, let me say this is I wanna say, um, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to go out when you guys voted on this and supported it for us to go out into the communities and work with the people and get the people's opinions as to what they want it changed. So with that, I wanna say thank you because it was a, a, a wonderful learning opportunity as to for people and what they brought a lot of solutions to the table. They just didn't bring their complaints, but they also brought their solutions as to how do we fix some of these issues that we exist with today as a tribal nation. So with that being said, that was a part of this experience. But also, I want to say, you know, we had a lot of partners in this as well who supported us all the way through. And, and that is our own tribal membership in the community who volunteered their time and who really believed in this process. And it gave our youth a hope and a voice. And so all we ask is that you pass this and let it go onto the ballot. Let the people vote. Let them have that voice and that opportunity to vote on this. Give them that opportunity because this is coming from the people. So I ask you, please take that into consideration and pass this and let the people vote on it. Pilama Yaye. Lydia Bear Keller. Okay, so I guess at the last council meeting that they're referring to, I requested to see each of the surveys that the people actually signed, and we never got that. Okay, and then um, like today, you're asking us to vote on this. Um, I guess um, from what people are saying, they want somebody to actually read the 50 amendments. And is that gonna be 50 ballots where people could vote yes or no on them? So the whole constitution is changed all at once and there's only one ballot, yes or no. Okay, and then 
You're saying 14% of the people came forward to make these changes, 14%. So, but the uh, um, 50 amendments, I think, you guys make a report on what you're doing and, and all that. And this is the first time I seen the actual amendment, the proposed amendment. And this document, you know, I'm not gonna vote on it today. We need time to look at it. We need time to, to uh, even, you know, take it back to the district councils and show them what, what the major changes are. Because you're changing the whole constitution, uh, the old one, and you're, you're presenting this whole new one. So, you know, today, I, I'm not going to vote on this. I, I, I'd like to have somebody read every amendment to the people, and, and that way they would understand every change that's being proposed. Okay, so um, with that, and people are asking for time to look at this because I don't think this is out there. You're, you're bringing it to us here today. Or is the amendments already out there? Okay, so um, I think it's, if we're gonna vote on it, I think you need to put, read every amendment out there for the people. Otherwise, I'm gonna make a motion to table it. And I think we're gonna, I want time to look at it and explain it to people because I know we get a lot of calls. I get a lot of calls on what does this mean? What is this gonna do? And what, how is it gonna change? And the time frame that we're giving people to change this whole constitution, I, I, I'm gonna make a motion to table it and bring it back. So that's my motion. We have a motion to table. Table the whole thing and then bring it back. Because the other thing is too wow. is- listen to me now. We have a motion to table which ceases all discussion. Oh. Second. So, so we have a second. <coughs> Stanley is the second. Lydia made the motion to table. Stanley was the second. <coughs> we need one. Yeah. What what is your what is your you're the motion maker? Well I guess um Myself, I think that 14% of the people made this, the changes. I think we need more than 50 or 60%. So we need, we need a timeline. That's what we ask for. <coughs> and you know, that's the other thing. I said here, I'm not against no constitution revision. I am not. <coughs> and I don't want that to be a part of, if it got tabled, <coughs> I don't think I want to be a part of that. So you made a motion. Do you want to put a timeline on this? That's, that's all I asked you. It's a cease discussion. That's up, that's up to the motion maker. We can sit here and ask all our questions, but you're the motion maker. I would think 60 days. 60 days. Okay. The second? Accept. Accepted. <laughs> Motion to table, bring it back in 60 days. Call for the vote, please. Lay little thunder. <coughs> Jim Mix. Yes. Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chauncey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. No. Valentina Merdanian. Yeah. Lydia Berkiller. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwald. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Ah. Jackie Sears. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. <laughs> Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Here. Craig Dillon. Yes.
motion to carry to table. Motion did carry, 13 yes, four no. And you know, with this, I'm just trying to give, there's only 14% of the people that, that responded. Okay, so there might be other people out there that, that needs to look at it before they come to the poll. And, and myself, I'm not against any constitutional revision. I think it's good. However, I think um, any time an amendment is made to a constitution, it should be voted each one, not this whole, the whole change and, and one big ballot coming forward. That, that's, what, that's my consideration. 60 days. Okay, we have Jackie to answer what she was after, and then we're gonna move on. Okay, you know, um, the, the Tribal Council had every opportunity to attend these district meetings because it was out in your district. And we did ask everybody to go out there, attend your meetings, with, hear what your, your membership's saying. You guys had that opportunity but chose not to. And I knew this was going to happen today because um, this is what the people had said. We're not, we shouldn't be sitting here thinking of ourselves. You know, I got people saying, oh, they put qualifications in there. Why did you, the people do that? I said, well, you should have came to the meetings and asked them why. This came from the people. They're the ones that wanted to see this. Just like we said, a lot of the youth, we need, you know, a lot of education. We make really, really important decisions. You guys are out there making decisions like this. Um, big money. On, on finances, on all the debt we're in, you know? That's why they had concerns. So, you know, you're taking the voice away from the people and um, what they wanted. And also, um, we had our plans to go out there to every district. We had our plans to go out there and propose the sample ballot on how it was going to look for the people. That's the next phase, to get people prepared so they don't know, they don't go in there blind and not knowing what the amendments were. You know, the, we had amendments in the past before. Never once have they gone to the people. Council made these decisions. So this, this time was gonna be the, in the history for us for to letting the people have a say. So here we are again, we take that opportunity away. Thank you. Okay, we are done. So now we have land committee. You have one. Resolution of the Oglossi Tribal Council of the Oglossi Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Oglossi Tribal Council of the Oglossi Tribe requesting technical assistance from the Bureau of Indian Affairs to assist in the preparation of an issue of an initial contract proposal for the contracting of land operations and realty departments of the Pine Ridge agencies. Whereas Oglossi Tribe adopted its constitution bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935 in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123 and under Article 3 of the Oglossi Tribe Constitution the Oglossi Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglossi Tribe. And whereas Oglossi Tribe Land and Natural Resources Committee is the standing committee of the Oglossi Tribal Council. And whereas Oglossi Tribe Land and Natural Resources Committee did discuss the functions of the land operations and realty departments of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And whereas Oglossi Tribe Land and Natural Resources Committee is aware that the Indian Self-Determination <coughs> and Education Assistance Act PL 93638 laws 25 USC 450 as amended allows the Glossy Tribe to enter into self-determination contracts 
for the Land Operations and Realty Departments of the Pinehurst <coughs> Agency, Bureau of Indian Affairs. And whereas Oglossi Tribe Land and Natural Resources Committee believes that self-determination contracts should be investigated and considered for the Pine Ridge Agency, Bureau of Indian Affairs, Land Operations, and Realty Departments. And whereas Oglossi Tribe Land and Natural Resources Committee did meet with a quorum present to conduct business on the 14th day of May, 2018, and did approve this resolution for presentation to the Oglossi Tribal Council for their action. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oglossi Tribal Council, based upon the recommendation of the Oglossi Tribe Land and Natural Resources Committee, does hereby request technical assistance from the Bureau of Indian Affairs for the preparation of an initial contract proposal for self-determination contracts for Pine Ridge Agency Land Operations and Realty Department. This was done a month or two ago, maybe. But sitting here thinking the past couple of weeks, and I, I, I didn't bring this up to the line, I didn't go to it last night. I'm really starting to wonder about this because with the Bureau's reorganization, are we going to cut ourselves short? Because we don't know what's going to take place with the Bureau on a reorganization. Um, it's kind of just thinking in the, in the future, but I guess as long as it's going to come back to the council, because this is only the intent, I guess. So I, I got to take this call. You can't. So you got to finish this. <laughs> that, that's what I got to say on it. So, so are you making the motion? Or I guess I'm the vice chair. Uh, I, guess, I guess I'll I'll motion for the land committee motion to approve. Motion to approve by Chancey Wilson, seconded by C. J. Clifford. Question. 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 Tina Merdania. Uh, in regards to the resolution that was just read in 63018 land operations, granted we know there there's a lot of issues in regards to land operations and its functions and so forth, but do we have anything in place to um, transition this and kind of guarantee that um, we won't have the same turmoil that we did when we made the revisions with just the uh, grazing code. <coughs> um, the way I believe it works, and Ms. Merdani and you was there that day, yeah. um, this is the intent. To, it goes to the Secretary of Interior, and then we put our plan together after we produce our John intent. John Long wants to be recognized. John Long. Oh, I'll recognize John Long, I guess. Hey, John Long has his hand up in here. Uh, the Bureau will support whatever the tribe wishes to proceed with this on, but I need to caution you based on a couple other reservations that, that did the same thing, is the concern on one of them was uh, have you reached out to your tribal land, individual landowners and, and got their input as far as the tribe manages their lands. Cora Whitehorse. For finally recognizing me, I was. I think to I feel recognize invisible. you all the time. <laughs> but um, isn't isn't the realty office like um, a, a treaty function that should remain with the BIA? I mean, because aren't they responsible? And and are we going to be able to have TAMS access if we six thirty eight this? Because isn't that just for BIA? Your BIA guy can answer you that right there. Don't move no more. I don't believe it's an inherent federal function. I think the tribe has the ability, if they choose to, to contract it. But what about 
TAMS would be one of the issues that we would have to work with the tribe on to give their access. Or I don't know that the Bureau, and I can't speak for the folks that incorporated TAMS, but it may be a situation where the tribe has to come up with their own version of what TAMS is. So that would mean we would have to spend money to come up with that version of a program that isn't funded well anyway. Yeah. CJ Clifford. Motion to table. Okay. We have a motion to table by Cora Whitehorse, seconded by Lisa Jumpinigo de Leon. Call for the vote, please. We have a motion to table. By Lisa Jumpinigo de Leon. Call for the vote, please. So they come up with a plan. Lane Thunder. Jim Meeks. Yes. There's no, I guess, on this. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> Cor White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Chancey Wilson. No. <coughs> Stephanie Leisure. No. Valentina Merdanian. No. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. No. Richard Greenwall. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Here. Colin C.J. Clifford. Here. Lisa Jumpinigo de Leon. Here. Can I crack that? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Dillon. <coughs> no. The motion to table. Eight yes, eight no, to abstain. Chancy Wilson. And I'll respect the, the motion, but I just wanna put a little history why the land committee brought that forward. There was a couple of BIA officials in a land committee meeting out here a month or two ago that told this committee that they did not have to follow tribal law. And that's why that was brought forward to 638, the program, because they, 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 they flat told this committee that, and I asked the secretary to give me the verbatim to pass it out, and I didn't get it in time today, but, but that come from a couple of BIA officials that they did not have to follow tribal law, but uh, that, that's, that's why that was brought forward to 638, didn't do it ourselves, so that tribal law was followed. John Long, but, but before before this tabling motion, before it's done, Blaine Little Thunder did not get to vote. Yeah, I'll vote yes on it. Vote to table. Then it's the done deal. Okay, John Long, and then we're done with this. Would you like me to address the TAMS question that Cora brought up earlier? I got No, we're tabled. Okay. We're good then. Okay. Well, it's kind of confusing, but I'll vote no on it. Gotta <laughs> <laughs> get up the stride. Say that again. Okay, we are going to rerun this vote just for clarification. Motion to table. Okay? <coughs> Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Yes. Jim Meeks. Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. No. 
Chauncey Wilson. No. Stephanie Leisure. No. Valentina Merdanian. Yeah. Lydia Bearkiller. Yes. Ella John Carlo. No. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. <coughs> Sonia Littlehawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Here. Yeah. Colin C. J. Clifford. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Uh -huh. Craig Dillon. No. Okay, here are the numbers. The motion to table did pass. Nine yes, eight no, and one not voting. Okay, we move on. HHS committee. You have seven. Yesterday we had 19, we went to seven as your that's on the 29th agenda. Yeah, there's 19 on the 29th, and all of a sudden we went down to 7. Is that just a typo? Yeah. Okay. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe approving the Employee Assistant Program's in-house operating procedures handbook. Whereas the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Re Reorganization Act of 1934, 24 U.S.C. 5123. And under Article 3 of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe's Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council in Art Article 4, Section 1F, to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the tribe, and in Section 1W, to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is the standing committee of the Ogallaw Tribal Council and has oversight of programs affected tri affecting tribal membership, such as Employee Assistance Program, EPA, and whereas the Health and Human Services Committee met on April 17, 2018, and recommended approval of the EAP's in-house operating procedures handbook. And whereas the Employee Assistance Program prepares prepared this handbook to assist the program with day-to-day -day operations and does not replace or conflict with the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Tribal Council of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe hereby approves the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe's Employees Assistance Program in-house operating procedures, procedure manual handbook. Sorry. Motion. We have a motion by Richard Greenwald. Seconded by Jim Meeks. Call for the vote, please. Plain Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Poor White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Uh huh. Lydia uh, Bearkiller. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Abstain. Colin C. J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalio. Uh -huh. Craig Dillon. Motion did carry 16 yes, zero no, one abstain, and one not voting. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Chair. Number two, please. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe approving the Employee Assistance 
Program Workplace Facility Emergency Management Handbook, whereas the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 24 U.S.C. 5123, and under Article 3 of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe's constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1F to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Tribe, and in Section 1W to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the Tribe and its members. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a stand-in committee of the Ogallosu Tribal Council and has oversight of the programs affecting Tribal membership, such as Employee Assistance Program, EAP, and whereas the Health and Human Services Committee met on April 17, 2018 and rec recommended approval of the Employee Assistance Program EAP Workplace Facility Emergency Handbook. And whereas the Workplace Emergency Management Handbook is to assist the EAP with emergency protocols such as an emergency evacuation protocol, active shooter protocol, and suicide crisis response protocol. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Tribal Council of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe hereby approves the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe Employee Assistance Program Workplace Facility Emergency Management Handbook. Motion. We have a motion by Richard Greenwald, seconded by Philip Goodcrow. Motion Call for the vote, please. Lane Lilfender. Oh. Jim Mix. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Lil White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. <laughs> Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Oh, huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Huh. Jackie Sears. Abstain. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Oh, huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion did carry. 15 yes, zero no, one abstain, and two not voting. Thank you, Council. Number three, please. Secretary, can you read number three for me? Resolution of the Glossu Tribal Council of the Glossu Tribe, an unincorporated tribe. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Glossy Tribe supporting the Employee Assistance Program Lakota Language Movement for Tribal Elected Officials, Tribal Employees, and Political Appointees. Whereas the Glossy Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 24 U.S.C. 5123. And under, under Article 3 of the Glossy Tribe's Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Glossy Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1F, to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Tribe, and in Section 1W, to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the Tribe and its members. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee of the Glossy Tribe and has oversight of programs affecting tribal membership, such as the e Employee Assistance Program, EAP, and whereas the Health and Human Services Committee met on April 17, 2018, and recommended support and approval of the Employee Assistance Program's Lakota Language Movement, and whereas the Employee Assistance Program's mission statement is to increase employees' productivity through positive changes, utilizing the medicine well concepts of spiritual, 
physical, emotional, and mental balance. And whereas EAP acknowledges that the Lakota language is a very important part of positive change, and that the Lakota language movement is the beginning of revitalizing and preserving the language through joint efforts of elected officials, tribal employees, and tribal programs. And whereas EAP has drafted an Oglossu Tribe Lakota language movement plan to start the process with tribal elected officials, tribal employees, and political appointees, and that it will also extend invitation to tribal members. And whereas upon approval by tribal council, a planning session will be arranged and all interested parties will be encouraged to attend and have input for this movement. Now therefore be it resolved that the Tribal Council of the Oglala, Oglala Sioux Tribe supports the Oglala Sioux Tribe Lakota language movement. Motion. Motion by Richard Greenwald. Seconded by Tina Merdanian. Call for the vote please. Lane Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Yeah. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Uh huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Jackie Sears. Abstain. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Oh, ha. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion carries. 16 yes, zero no, one abstain, and one not voting. Number four, please. Thank you, Chair. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe approving Ogallaw Sioux Tribal Employees Participation in the Lakota Language Movement, OSTLLM, as either a participant or as an instructor for the one hour scheduled weekly sessions with prior approval of their supervisor. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 24 U.S.C. 5123, and under Article 3 of the Oglala Sioux Tribe's constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1F, to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the tribe, and in Section 1W, to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council and has oversight of the programs affecting tribal membership, such as the Employee Assistance Program, EAP, and whereas the Employee Assistance Program, EAP, mission statement is increasing employees' productivity through positive changes, utilizing the medicine wheel concepts of spiritual, spirituality, physical, emotional, and mental balance. And whereas the EAP acknowledges that the Lakota language movement is a very important part of the positive change for the tribe and its tribal employees. And whereas the OST LLM is to revitalize and preserve the Lakota language through joint efforts of elected officials, tribal employees, and tribal members. Whereas EAP encourages tribal employees that speak the Lakota language to participate as an instructor as needed during, one, during the one hour weekly sessions and also encourage tribal leadership to participate in this opportunity. And whereas the tribal employees, employee or employees will be granted one hour per week to attend or teach the Lakota language. And instructors will receive an incentive for the contribution to the OST LLM, which will be identified in the final OST LLM plan. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe supports and approves 
the Employee Assistant Program's Lakota Language Movement, and be it further resolved that the Ogallala Sioux Tribal Council approves part participation of the tribal employees as the, either a participant or as an instructor, and that one hour per week will be granted to those tribal employees who attend, provided that their supervisor approves. Motion. Second. Motion by Richard Greenwall. We have a second over here, Stephanie Leisure. Question. Question, Stanley, little white man. You know, the idea of um, having the employees learn the language is really, really good. In order to make it work, I think uh, it should be this one part, I have a problem with it because otherwise it's not going to work, is that very last sentence where it says um, one hour per week will be granted to those employees who attend. And then you have the iffy thing of provided that their supervisor approves. So you either do it or you don't do it. I mean, that's what it comes right down to it. So I say uh, just strike out the supervisor approves and he's going to approve it. Motion maker. Yeah, I think, I, I think it's just that one little bitty section. Is there going to be a charge to the employees, or does it come out of our indirect cost? For the for the is that going to for be the classes? Is that going to be so? You're asking, is that going to be considered a part of training for the IDC cost? Mm -hmm. Have we discussed that? Uh, at this stage, I believe it was stated in there that that would be addressed in there, right there at, at the end, that they would discuss that in that last sentence or sentence above, wasn't it? <coughs> I don't know if that's put in there because maybe some programs may not allow it, allow for it, and that's probably why it's in there, is, is it's up to the supervisor, and I, I'd imagine some programs might not be allowed. Why would they? Because of federal dollars and regulations. Maybe. Authorized uses of the fund. So if it comes out of fringe benefits, then it should be a cost to the indirect cost. And that's kind of why we should have some clarification. Uh, and I'm not the one that wrote this, so if, if you need more clarification or if you want to pull out of there, that section, I mean, is that what you want to do, Stanley, is just yeah, pull that last sentence part out? Yeah, just that one part where it's uh, provided that their employee uh, supervisor <laughs> approves. I mean, if you're going to make a language work, it's got to be done. I'm, I'm okay with that as the motion maker, and if the, the um, person that wrote it wants to come back later, they can, I guess, if they want. But we didn't answer Courtney's question on, on the IDC part. Jackie Sears. I don't, I don't um, say too much about it, but I, I am familiar with the fringe benefits, being on benefits committee. And that's, that's how the uh, EAP is funded with Clinical Lab. So they, they, um, it's free for the participants. And also, um, I believe the EAP, they do conferences and they earn extra money on the side. So that's what they use for the community. Because if it doesn't, if they're not covered under the fringe, then it covers the family with the extra dollars. But I don't think there's a charge to this. Coral Whitehorse. Um, there is a charge if you have to pay the employee for the hours that they're working and then they're going over to teach or whatever. You know, that's why the supervisor has to approve it. Because if, you, if, your, if your contract is to provide services for one thing and you're allowing them to do something else, but you're, you're paying them for this other thing for the hours that they're doing it, then that could be a disallowed cost for that payroll plus the fringe 
plus everything else that goes along with it. So that's why you need supervisor approval. Because somebody has to be responsible, otherwise we're responsible. And that would be my understanding too, is there'd be issues with that. So is there something you want to add or, or strike the supervisor portion or do you want to add something within that? Or do you want to table this and bring it back? Stephanie Leisure. Motion to table by Stephanie Leisure, seconded by Ella John Carlo. Call for the vote. Plain Hill Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Mix. No. Poor white horse. Um, to table. Okay. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. No. Austin Watkins. No. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Oh, uh huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. No. Philip Goodcrow. Yeah. David Puyer. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Abstain. Colin CJ Clifford. Here. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Here. Craig Dillon. Motion to table did fail. Seven yes, eight no, two not voting. Richard? Chair, I'll just leave my motion as the same, and I'd rather just let the, let us vote it through, and then it's up to the supervisor, depending on their funding, you know, or if they're going to be able to approve that or not, and just leave it at that for now. Okay. That's my motion. So we had a motion, the original motion, and the second. Call for that vote. Plain Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Mix. Yes. Queer White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chauncey Wilson. Abstain. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentino Merdanian. Uh huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. No. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Yeah. Abstain. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Uh oh, huh. Craig Dillon. Motion did carry. 13 yes, one no, two abstain, and two not voting. Thank you, Council. Chairman number five. Thank you, Chair. Secretary, can you read this next one?
Resolution of the Gloucester Tribal Council of the Gloucester Tribe and the Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Gloucester Tribe approving the lease to purchase agreement between Ambetuluta Otipi and the Wakbaumne District, contingent upon Wakbaumne District purchasing the Central School Building and also approving Ambetuluta Otipi's use of DOJ funds to renovate the Central School Building for a treatment and detox center. Whereas the Gloucester Tribe has adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. 5123, and under Article 3, Section 1 of the Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Gloucester Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Glossy Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1A to negotiate with, among others, the federal, state, or local governments on behalf of the tribe and in Section 1W to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health, safety, and general welfare of tribal members. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is the standing committee of the Tribal Council and has oversight of the Mbetiluta OTP program for alcohol and substance abuse. And whereas the HHS committee met on April 17, 2018, and recommends approval of Mbetiluta OTP's request to enter into a lease to a purchase agreement with Wakbaumne District that is contingent upon Wakbaumne District purchasing the central school property. And whereas Funding for the detoxification center planning and construction slash renovation was awarded to Ambetu Luta OTP by the U.S. Department of Justice, Bureau of Justice Assistance through cooperative agreements. 2010-1IP-BX-0077 and 2011 1C-BX-0030, and whereas the Central School Building will be renovated to a 45-bed residential addictions treatment center with capacity to provide detoxification services. And whereas attached lease to purchase agreement for the Central School Building and three acres of land allocated to in Bennett County, West three, West three acres of the southwest quarter of government lot three and section 18 township 37 north range 39 west six principal meridian in Bennett County, South Dakota and that the purchase price is $350,000. Now therefore be it resolved that the tribal council of the Glossy tribe hereby approves the attached lease to purchase agreement between Ambetuluta OTP and the Bennett and the Wakbaumne District for the Central School Building and land located in Bennett County, South Dakota. And be it further resolved that the Tribal Council hereby approves the use of DOJ funds for renovation of the Central School Building to a 45-bed adult treatment and detox center. And be it further resolved that the tribal president, or in his absence, the, tri the vice president of the Galassi tribe is hereby authorized to sign any documents necessary. Yeah, the, the um, Wakbamni district is in. Um, Fabian did come to the executive board with a proposal for uh, Wakbamni District to help secure and get the detox center, the, the central school building out, out there east of, um, close to Batesland, north of Batesland. And um, at this point, you know, we told him that if, if it's okay that he was coming for a tribal council approval to do that with his funds. So that's why this is here but uh, we still have to take it through our district meeting tomorrow, I believe, yeah. Because it's in your district. So okay. motion to approve. Lydia. I think if the district is gonna have input on it, I think the district should approve it before we, the council approve it, because if we approve it, it's gonna go through. Well, didn't she just say that they need council approval first? 
Yeah. That's why I made the motion to approve. That's why, yeah. That's that's what Jackie's asking for. Yeah, they're going to meet after did, this. Okay, all right, so attorney, we have... Did our the attorney approve the agreement? With all the, like, the liability... Austin Watkins. You know, um, we look at this, the detox and everything. We tried to get it through Medicine Root the school, but it was shot down. You know, it's time that we look at things like this, get that detox, get help for our people, because we do have a problem on this reservation. I want to thank Buck Bombay for stepping up. Okay. So we have a motion by Cora Whitehorse. We got a second by Sonia Weston to approve. Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Mix. Yes. Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Oh, ha. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Uh huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Uh huh. Craig Dillon. Motion did carry 16 yes, zero no, zero abstain, and two not voting. Number six, please. Thank you, Chair. Resolution to Ogallah Sioux Tribal Council of the Ogallah Sioux Tribe approving the disenrollment of Matthew J. Lorenzen. Whereas the Ogallah Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Re Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123, and under Article 3 of the Constitution, the Ogallah Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Ogallah Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council, Article 4, Section J, to enact resolutions concerning membership in the Ogallah Sioux Tribe, where, and whereas the Tribal Enrollment Office has received a request for disenrollment of Matthew J. Lorenzen, date of birth 12-498, requested to sever his ties with the Ogallah Sioux Tribe, and the House and Human Services Committee has recommended granting the request on April 17, 2018. And whereas the Tribal Council desires to grant the request for disenrollment, now therefore be resolved that the Ogallah Sioux Tribal Council of the Ogallah Sioux Tribe hereby grant disenrollment for Matthew J. Lorenzen from the Ogallah Sioux Tribal Rules and Census as of this date. Motion second. No, I, I don't motion for people to disenroll. Motion by Stanley Little White Man, seconded by Sonia Weston. Call for the vote, please. Lane Little Thunder. Yeah. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. <clears throat> no. Stanley Little Whiteman. Yes. Austin Watkins. No. Chauncey Wilson. No. Stephanie Leisure. No. Valentina Merdanian. Here. Yeah. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. No. <laughs> Philip Goodcrow, oh. David Puyer, Sonia Littlehawk Weston, huh? Huh. Jackie Sears, oh, huh. Colin C.J. Clifford, Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion, yeah. Craig Dillon,
Motion did carry eight yes, seven no, zero abstain, and three not voting. Thank you, Council. Number seven, please. Thank you, Chair. Resolution of Ogallala Sioux Tribal Council of Ogallala Sioux Tribe approving the disenrollment of Sarah Ellis, whereas Ogallala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Re Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123, and under Article 3 of the Constitution, the Ogallala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Ogallala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council in Article 4, Section J to enact re resolutions concerning membership in the Ogallala Sioux Tribe, and whereas the Tribal Enrollment Office has received a request for disenrollment of Sarah Alice, date of birth 5-1790, requesting to be enrolled with the Absentee Shawnee Tribe of Oklahoma. And the Health and Human Services Committee has recommended granting the request on April 17, 2018, whereas, and whereas the Tribal Council desires to grant the request for disenrollment. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Ogallala Sioux Tribal Council the Ogallala Sioux Tribe hereby grants disen grant disenrollment for Sarah Alice from the Ogallala Sioux Tribe rolls and census of the, as of this date. Motion. Motion by Ella John Carlo. Second. Seconded by Cora Whitehorse. <coughs> Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Here. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. No. Chancey Wilson. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Oh, huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. No. Philip Goodcrow. No. David Puyer. Sonia Little Hot West then. Ha. Jackie Sears. Uh -huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Uh -huh. Craig Dillon. Motion did carry. 12 yes, 3 no, 0 abstain, and 3 not voting. Okay, numbers, number 8. Thank you, Chair. Secretary, can you read number 8? Resolution of the Glossy Tribal Council of the Glossy Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Glossy Tribe Native Women's Healthcare Program approving the FY 2019 Professional Services Agreement with Jan Mangelson, Certified Nurse Midwife. Whereas the Glossy Tribe organized in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934-25 USC. 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935 and under Article 3 of the Oglossi Tribes Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglossi Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Oglossi Tribe, Oglala Sioux Constitution authorizes the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council the power to delegate to subordinate boards or officers any of the enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 1, reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue of such delegated power. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee that has over, oversight of issues affecting the health of tribal membership, including the Native Women's Health Care Program and the HHS Committee met, meet on May 15, 2018, 
and recommended approval of this professional services agreement. And whereas the Blouse Tribe operates the Native Women's Health Care Program, NWHC, a governmental agency of the tribe pursuant to a self-determination contract entered into under public law number 93638 to provide health care services to public Native American patients that includes certified nurse midwife services and whereas contractor Jan Mangelson is a certified nurse midwife and has experience in the area specified for services pursuant to this professional services agreement. And whereas this professional services agreement for midwife services for the Native Women's Health Care Program has been negotiated with Jan Mangelson and is acceptable to the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the director of the Native Women's Health Care Program and requires final approval from the Tribal Council. Now therefore be it resolved that the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe hereby approves the attached professional services agreement for FY 2019 between the Oglossi Tribe Native Women's Health Program and Jan Engelson Certified Midwife Nurse. And be it further resolved that the Oglossi Tribal President or in his absence, the Vice President is hereby authorized to sign the contract on behalf of the tribe. I need a motion. We have a second. Motion by Richard Greenwald, seconded by Sonia Weston. Call for the vote, please. Lane Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Nancy Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. <coughs> Oha. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Jackie Sears. Oh, huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Oh, huh. Craig Dillon. Motion did carry 15 yes, zero no, zero abstain, and three not voting. Number nine, please. Thank you, Chair. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe approving the professional services agreement between the Oglala Sioux Tribe, Native Women's Health Care, NW8C, and Dr. Jeffrey Bent for FY 2019. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe is organized in accordance with the section, with section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 on December 14th, 1935, 25 USC 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Oglala Sioux Tribes Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body, <clears throat> is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1W to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Constitution authorizes the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council to de delegate subordinate boards or officers any of the enumerate, enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 1, reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue of such delegate power, and whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee of the Oral Sioux Tribe that has been delegated the power to oversee health and human services programs on behalf of the Oral Sioux Tribal Council and the Oglal Oyate, and whereas the tribe operates the Native Women's Health Care Program 
a governmental agency of the tribe, pursuant to a self-determination contract entered into under public law number 93638 to provide the health care services to Native American patients, which include board certified physicians services. And whereas Dr. Jeffrey Bent is a board certified physician in the area specified for services and pursuant to this agreement, and whereas the tribe desires to hire contractor to provide OBGYN medical services to eligible patients through the tribe's Native Women's Health Care Program. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee met on May 15, 2018 and recommended approval of the physician contract for the Native Women's Health Care Program for FY 2019. And whereas physical con physician contract professional services contract for Jeffrey Bent, Dr. Jeffrey Bent is attached here too and will and forward it to the Tribal Council for our final approval. Now therefore it be resolved that the Health and Human Services Committee hereby recommends approval of the Native Women's Health Care Physician Contract for Dr. Jeffrey Bent for two th FYI 2019. Motion. Motion by Richard Greenwald. Question. Question. Tina Merdanian. Richard, is there any way that we can combine um, that resolution to include Dr. Jeffrey Bennett, Dr. Mark Ballard, and Dr. Angela Anderson? Do you need all separate resolutions for them? Yeah, why? Are you talking about for references yeah, they're all to doctors for the to provide their services for the same entity? Okay. But yet we have separate contracts for each of those yeah. doctors. Yeah. Chair, I'd like the secretary to read number ten. Number ten, please. <coughs> you read a motion. Do we vote on that yet? I was, I was I was waiting for a, a motion down, huh? and I was waiting for a second. I'll take a motion by Jackie Sears. <laughs> Call for the vote. Lane Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Mix. Yes. Cora White Horsey. <coughs> yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Mardanian. Oh, huh. Lady Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlos. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. David Puyer. Okay. <coughs> Sonia Little Hot Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Oh, huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Who? Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Oh, huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion did carry 17 yes, zero no, zero abstain, and one not voting. Number 10, please. Thank you, Chair. Secretary, please read number 10. <laughs> Resolution of the Glossy Tribal Council of the Glossy Tribe, an unincorporated tribe. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Glossy Tribe approving the professional services agreement between the Glossy Tribe Native Women's Health Care and Dr. Mark Ballard for FY 2019. Whereas the Glossy Tribe is organized in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 on December 14, 1935, 25 U.S.C. 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under Article 3 of the Glossy Tribes Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the, of the Glossy Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1W to protect 
and promote the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Glossy Tribal Council Constitution authorizes the Glossy Tribal Council to delegate to subordinate boards or officers any of the enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 1, reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue of such delegated power. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee of Glossy Tribe that has been delegated the power to oversee health and human services programs on behalf of the Glossy Tribal Council and the Oglala Oyate. And whereas the tribe operates the Native Women's Health Care Program, a governmental agency of the tribe, pursuant to a self-determination contract entered into under public law no, number 93638 to provide health care services to Native American patients, which includes board certified physician services. And whereas Dr. Mark Ballard is a board certified physician in the area specified for services and pursuant to this agreement. And whereas the tribe desires to hire a contractor to provide OBGYN medical services to eligible patients through the tribe's Native Women's Health Care Program. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee met on May 15, 2018 and recommended approval of the physician contract for the Native Women's Health Care Program for FY 2019 and whereas the physician contract, professional services contract for Dr. Mark Ballard is attached here to and forwarded to Tribal Council for final approval. Now therefore be it resolved that Health and Human Services Committee, I'll make a correction, it's a gloss to Tribal Council, hereby approves, Jen, can you correct that please? That's that last second page, it's a Council resolution. I'm just going to um, add one more and be it further resolved that the uh, tribal president or the vice president can sign the, put that language in there to have them sign this. So you're good with that? I see you're still Yes, ready. sir. Okay. Motion by Richard Greenwald, seconded by Ella John Carlo. Call for the vote. Lane Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stammy Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Oh. Uh -huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Ella John Carlo? Yes. Richard Greenwell? Yes. Philip Goodcrow? Oh. David Puyer? Yes. Sonia Lilhawk Weston? Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears? Oh, uh huh. Colin C.J. Clifford? Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion? Oh, uh ha. -huh. Craig Dillon? Yes. Motion carried 16 yes, zero no, zero abstain, and two now voting. Thank you, Council. Number 11, please. Thank you, Chair. Resolution of the Ogallan Sioux Tribal Council of the Ogallan Sioux Tribe approving the professional services agreement between the Ogallan Sioux Tribe, Native, Women, Native Women's Health Care, and Dr. Angela Anderson for FYI 2019. Whereas the Ogallan Sioux Tribe is organized in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 on December 14, 1935. 
25 U.S.C. 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Oasu Tribes Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body, is the governing body of the Oasu Tribe. Whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1W to protect and promote health and wealth and, and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Ogallosu Tribal Constitution authorizes the Ogallosu Tribal Council to delegate subordinate to subordinate boards or officers of the enumerated, of the enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 1, reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue of such delegated power. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee of the Ogallosu Tribe that has been delegated the power to oversee health and human services programs on behalf of the Ogallala Sioux Tribal Council and the Ogallala Oyate. And whereas the, tribal, the tribe operates the Native Women's Health Care Program, a governmental agency of the tribe pursuant to a self-determination contract entered in, into under Public Law 93-638 to provide health care services to Native American patients, which include board-certified physician services. And whereas Dr. Angela Anderson is a board certified physician in the area specified for services and pursuant to this agreement, and whereas the tribe desires to hire a contractor to provide OBGYN medical services to eligible patients through the tribe's Native Women Health Care Program, and whereas the Health and Human Services Committee met on May 15, 2018, and recommended approval of the physician contract for the Native Women's Health Care Program for FY 2019, and whereas the physician contract, professional services contract for Dr. Angela Anderson is attached here too and forwarded to tribal council for final approval. Now therefore it be resolved that the Ogallosu Tribal Council hereby recommends approval of the Native Women's Health Care physician contract for Dr. Pamela Anderson for FY 2019. And then we'll add that other part in there and further it re, thir, further be resolved that the tribal president or vice president in his absence may sign. So you're gonna add that in there? Um, yeah, and then just uh, therefore be it resolved that um, council approves, not recommends. Just, yes. Just take, recommends that, okay. Yeah, motion. <clears throat> motion by Richard Greenwald, seconded by Ella John Carlo. Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Little Whiteman. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Murdanian. Oh. Uh -huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Oh, ha. Huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Craig Dillon. Yes. <coughs> Motion did carry 15 yes, zero no. Zero abstain and three not voting. Thank you, Council. Number 12, please. Thank you, Chair Secretary. If you could read number 12. Resolution of the Glossy Tribal Council of the Glossy Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the, of the Oglossi Tribe approving the FY 2019 professional services agreement between the Oglossi Tribe Native Women's Healthcare Program and Shayla Lewis. Certified nurse midwife. Whereas the Glossy Tribe organized in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 USC 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, and under Article 3 of the Glossy Tribe's constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglossi Tribe, and whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Oglossi Tri Constitution authorizes the Oglossi Tribal Council the power to delegate 
to subordinate boards or officers any of the enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 1, reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue of such delegated power. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee that has oversight of issues affecting the health of tribal membership, including the Native Women's Health Care Program and the HHS Committee, met meet on May 15, 2018 and recommended approval of this contract. Whereas the Gloucester Tribe operates the Native Women's Health Care Program, a, go a governmental agency of the tribe, pursuant to a self-determination contract entered into under public law number 93638 to provide health care services to Native American patients that include certified nurse midwife services. And whereas contractor Shayla Lewis is a certified nurse midwife and has experience in the area specified for services pursuant to this PSA. And whereas this PSA is a certified midwife services for the Native Women's Health Care Program has been negotiated with Shayla Lewis and is acceptable to the Glossy Tribe and the Director of the Native Women's Health Care Program and requires final approval from the Tribal Council. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Tribal Council of the Oglossu Tribe hereby approves the attached professional services agreement for FY 2019 between Oglossu Tribe Native Women's Health Care Program and Shayla Lewis, certified midwife nurse. And be it further resolved that the Oglossu Tribal President, or in his absence, the Vice President, is hereby authorized to sign the contract on behalf of the tribe. Motion. Motion by Richard Greenwall, seconded by Cora Whitehorse. Call for the vote, please. Blaine Littlefender. Vote. Jim Meeks. Yep. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Lil Whiteman. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Oh, huh. Lydia Bearkiller. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwall. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. David Puyer, yeah. Sonia Littlehawk Weston, ha. Jackie Sears, oh, ha. Colin C.J. Clifford, oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion, Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion did carry 16 yes, zero no, zero abstain, and two not voting. Thank you, Council. Number 13. Sure, um, real quick on, on the other two, Jeffrey Bent and Mark Ballard. We need to make sure we adjust those two last paragraphs also in those two resolutions. And they're all missing that same thing. I apologize on behalf of our attorney who prepared these. Thank you, Chair. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Ogasu Tribe approving the professional services agreement between the Ogla Sioux Tribe Native Women's Health Care and Dr. Rochelle Christensen for FY 2019. Whereas the Ogla Sioux Tribe is organized in accordance with the Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934. On December 14, 1935, 25 U.S.C. 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Ogla Sioux Tribe's Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body, is the governing body of the Ogallisu Tribe. Whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1W to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Ogallisu Tribal Constitution authorizes the Ogallisu Tribal Council to delegate its subordinate boards or officers of any of the enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 1, reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue 
of such delegated power. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee of the Olasu tribe that has been delegated the power to oversee health and human services programs <clears throat> on behalf of the Ogallasu Tribal Council and the Ogallas Oyate. And whereas the tribe operates the Native Women's Health Care Program, a governmental agency of the tribe, pursuant to a self-determination contract entered into under Public Law 93-638 to provide, to provide such health care services to Native American patients, which include board-certified physicians' services. And whereas Dr. Rochelle Christensen is a board-certified physician in the area specified for services and pursuant to this agreement. And whereas the tribe desires to hire a contractor to provide OBGYN medical services to eligible patients through the tribe's Native Women's Health Care Program. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee met on May 15, 2018 and recommended approval of the physician contract for Native Women's Health Care Program for FY 2019. And whereas the physician contract, professional services contract, for Dr. Rochelle Christensen is attached here too and forwarded to Tribal Council for final approval. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Ogallasu <coughs> Tribe hereby approves the Native Women's Health Care Physicians contract for Dr. Rochelle Christensen for FY 2019. Be it further resolved that the OST President, or in his absence, the Vice President, is hereby authorized to sign the contract on behalf of the Tribe. Motion. <laughs> Motion by Richard Garnier. <laughs> Greenwall, I'm sorry. <laughs> Long day. Long day. <laughs> Seconded by Cora Whitehorse. Please call for the vote. <laughs> Blaine Lutherner. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yep. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chauncey Wilson. No. <laughs> Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Murdanian. Uh -huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwald. No. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. No. Oh. David Puyer. Yeah. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Uh huh. Colin C. J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Oh. Uh -huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion did carry 17 yes, one no. Thank you, Council. Next one we have is number 14. Thank you, Chair. Secretary, if you could read 14, please. <coughs> Resolution of the Glossy Tribal Council of the Glossy Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. <coughs> Resolution of the Glossy Tribe approving. Resolution of the Glossy Tribal Council of the Glossy Tribe approving the FY 2019 Professional Services Agreement between the Glossy Tribe Native Women's Health Care Program with Chelsea Iverson, Certified <coughs> Nurse Midwife. Whereas the Glossy Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934. 25 U.S.C. 5123. In Article 3 of the Oglossi Tribe's Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglossi Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1F of the Constitution of the Oglossi Tribe authorizes the Tribal Council to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Oglossi Tribe, and Article 4, Section 1W authorizes the Tribal Council to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Oglossi Tribe and its membership. 
And whereas Article 4, Section 1T of the Oglossi Tribe Constitution authorizes Oglossi Tribal Council the power to delegate to subordinate boards or officers any of the enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 1, reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue of such delegated power. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee that has oversight of issues affecting the health of tribal membership, including the Native Women's Health Care Program and the HHS Committee meet on May 15, 2018, and recommended approval of this professional services agreement. And whereas the Oglossi Tribe operates a Native Women's Health Care Program, NWHC, a governmental agency of the tribe, pursuant to self-determination contract entered into under public law number 93638 to provide health care services to Native American patients that include certified nurse midwife services. And whereas contractor Chelsea Iverson is a certified nurse midwife and has experience in the area specified for services pursuant to this professional services agreement. And whereas a contract for midwife services for the Native Women's Health Care Program has been negotiated with Chelsea Iverson and is acceptable to the tribe and the director of the Native Women's Health Care Program and requires final approval from the Tribal Council. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Tribal Council of the Oglossi Tribe does hereby approve the attached professional services agreement for FY 2019 between the Oglossi Sioux Tribe Native Women's Health Care Program and Chalsa Iverson, certified midwife nurse. And be it further resolved that the Oglossi Tribal <coughs> President, or in his absence, the Vice President, is hereby authorized to sign the contract on behalf of the tribe. Motion. Second. Motion by Richard Greenwald. Seconded by Ella John Carlin. Call for the vote, please. Lane Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. <coughs> Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Murdanian. Oh, huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Yeah. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Oh, ha. Huh. Colin C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa G Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Oh, ha. Huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion carried, 17 yes, zero no, zero abstain, and one not voting. Thank you, Council. Number seven, number 15. Thank you, Chair. Resolution of the Oglossi, <coughs> Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Oglossi Tribe demanded the immediate removal of James Driving Hawk, Acting Area Officer, Great Plains Region, Indian Health Services. Whereas the Ogallasu tribe adopt, adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. 5123, and under Article 3, Section 1 of the Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing <coughs> body of the Ogallasu tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Ogallasu Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1A, to negotiate with the federal government on behalf of the tribe and to advise and consult with the representatives of the federal government. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee is a standing committee of the Ogallal Sioux Tribal Council and oversees the Indian Health Service at the Pine Ridge Service Unit. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee met on May 15, 2018 to demand the immediate removal of James Driving Hawk, Acting Director of the Great Plains Area of the Indian House Service pursuant to a vote of, to a vote of no confidence. And whereas the Tribal Council has lost confidence in his ability to serve the Great Plains and Pine Ridge in, a, in particular. Now therefore it resolved that the Tribal Council of the Ogunsu Tribe here, hereby demands the immediate removal of James Driving Hawk, Acting Director of the Great Plains Area of the Indian House Services, IHS. And be it further resolved that the position 
is re-advertised and filled and the Ogallossie Tribe has input on selection for the director, Great Plains Area IHS. Motion by Ella John Carlo. Second. Got a, got a second by Cora Whitehorse. David, clear, you got a question. Mr. Greenwald, do we want to put, I know this would be the position of the tribe, but do we want to put something in there to the effect of the uh, area of tribal health board recommend removal too? Because are you, are you going to do a separate resolution? Because if, if they pass resolutions to support him, then we are, are do they, it's already, already one. passed yeah. one for we already did. to re advertise. Okay. All right. Thanks. Motion. We have a motion by Ala John Carlo, seconded by Cora Whitehorse. Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Mix. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Lee Whiteman. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Mardanian. Uh huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Littlehawk Weston. Jackie Sears. Oh, huh. Collins C.J. Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Oh, huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion carried 18 yes, zero no. Number 16, please. Thank you, Chair. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Ogallossu Tribe approving, the, approving <laughs> reduced quorum for Health and Human Services Committee to three plus the chair to transact business. Whereas the Ogallossu Tribe adopted its constitution bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. 5123, and under Article 3, Section 1 of the Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Ogallossu Tribe, and whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Ogallossu Tribal Council in Article 4, Section 1S to adopt <coughs> laws regulating procedures of subcommittees of the Tribal Council, and whereas the Health and Human Services Committee, HHS Committee, is a stand-in committee of the Tribal Council, and whereas the HHS Committee met on May 15th, 2018 and voted to reduce the quorum, the number of members necessary to establish a quorum to three plus the chairman to conduct business. Now, therefore, we resolve that the Tribal Council of the Tribe hereby approves HHS Committee's reduction in quorum. Motion by Cora Whitehorse. Second. Seconded by Lydia Baird Killer. Jackie Sears, question. Yeah, um, I have a concern on this because, you know, there's many times that we want to come to these meetings, but they're a majority of time they're in Rapid City. We have other obligations that are on the reservation that we, that we are doing, and we can't be going to Rapid City to attend these meetings. And it's been going on for quite some time, and it's still continuing. And I know that um, other committees are also having joint meetings up there, and it's a hindrance to us when we sit on the committee, makes us look bad that we're not attending these meetings. We would like to, but when you have commitments and we are sticking to our dailies, you know, sometimes they're called on the meeting date, and sometimes they're not called on you know, they're, they're on different dates, so we're, we're um, infringing on other committees. So we're all confused. There's confusion going on. 
with these secretaries too because they don't know who's scheduling all these meetings. One committee will make a, a motion to have a meeting up in Rapid, joint meeting, have it at the casino, then, then there's another meeting scheduled at the same time. So myself, I'm not gonna support this because I don't think it's fair to some of us that do sit on these committees because if, if, it, if it was here on its regular day, we can be here, but how could we go to Rapid City back and forth and you know things like that so you know that's my opposition to this uh, resolution I have Cora Whitehorse and then Richard Greenwald thank you um, that's not true there has been several 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 days that we sat at the chambers sat here sat at housing sat at public safety waiting for a quorum and our quorum isn't that big but when only four people are showing up, it makes it hard to conduct business. All this stuff is from previous, you know? And our only jobs really are to go to committee meetings. We have a chair and a vice chair and all the committee members. And, and that's our main job. I mean, that's why they told us only get on two committees. Some of us are on three and four. And, and I know that I miss a lot of ENBD meetings because of prior obligations or other obligations. And it's really hard when you're trying to have a committee meeting, even in the chambers, and you can't get a quorum. And you know how it is with finance, too. Finance is the biggest committee. We lowered our quorum to 605 plus the chair. We still can't get quorum sometimes. And it's frustrating for everybody when we have to sit there and wait. That's why I made this motion. That's why we need to have either open up the committee <coughs> meetings to have every single council person counted and not have assigned committees or lower quorums in every committee. Because honestly, everybody has other obligations. All of us in here, our main responsibility is supposed to be committee meetings, but we all have district people that need help somewhere. We all have other business that we have to tend to. That's why I pushed this. Thank you. Richard Greenwald. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Being the chair of HHS, I kind of take offense to the fact that it's been um, falsely advertised that um, the majority of our meetings are in Rapid City. That is totally false. The me meetings that we've had in Rapid City generally are in reference to these programs. These programs right here, the, the programs that we have at Susan. There's times that we go up there. There's times that the director of Native Men's has asked us to go up and look at a facility that he might want to purchase for um, in-house uh, in uh, addiction treatment center things like that. So the majority of them haven't been there. The fact of the matter is, is that some people missed the majority of our meetings. And, and, and a lot of that is fact. I could pull the, the, the documentation on our sign-in sheets at our meetings. But to sit here and try to say that majority of our meetings are in Rapid City, that's not true. That's false. We do have meetings in Rapid City, but those meetings are specific to specific things that have to be taken care of, either because our tribe isn't the only one involved in it, maybe Rosebud and Eagle Butte and some other tribes are involved, and it requires that all three of our tribes meet. But generally, our meetings, my meetings, I prefer to have in Pine Ridge. Those are the facts. I just wanted to say that. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Where is our secretary? Come on over here, Stephanie. We have a motion and a second. Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Yes. Chancey Wilson. No. Stephanie Leisure. No. Valentina Mardanian. Yeah. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. Richard Greenwall. Yes. 
Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Littlehawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Here. CJ Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle De Leon. Yeah. Craig Dillon. Yes. <laughs> Motion carried. <laughs> Thirteen yes. Five no. Thank you, Council. Number 17. Thank you, Chair Hunt Secretary. Number 17. <laughs> Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe supporting the collaborative efforts of the Oglala Sioux Lakota Housing, OSLH, Public Safety, Child Protection Services, and other tribal organizations continue working together to provide a safe environment for all our people and to update their MOUs. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, <clears throat> 25 U.S.C. 5123, and under Article 3, Section 1 of the Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council in Article for Section 1F to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Oglala Sioux Tribe in accordance with the terms of a ch charter. Section 10, to charter subordinate organizations for economic purposes to regulate the activities of associations thus chartered by purposes and to regulate the activities of associations thus chartered by the Tribal Council. <coughs> Section S. To adopt laws regulating the procedure of chartered organizations and Section 1T to delegate to sub subordinate boards any of the enumerated powers reserving the right to review any action taken by virtue of such delegated power. <clears throat> and Section 1W empowers the tribe to adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the tribe and its membership. And whereas the OSLH was chartered by the Oglala Sioux Tribe in 1998, reorganizing the Oglala Sioux Housing Authority in 1963, the OSLH's mission is to obtain and maintain housing for the people of the Pine Ridge Reservation and assist with improvement of safety and to remedy unsafe housing conditions that are injurious to public health and safety and whereas the health and human services committee hhs committee is a standing committee of the oglala sioux tribal council that oversees chartered organizations such as the oglala sioux <coughs> lakota housing and whereas the hhs committee met on may 15 2008 and expressed their support of collaborative efforts of oslh public safety, child protection services, and other tribal organizations that are working together to provide a safe environment for our people and keep our communities safe. And whereas <coughs> the OSLH's tenant service representatives, TS TSR, work directly with the tenants to manage properties and ensure the safety and well-being of the housing communities and deal with move-ins and move-outs, annual recertifications, and provide home visits to ensure that the rules of occupancy are complied with. And whereas the OSLH's Community Safety Patrol, formerly called the Saturation Patrol, consists of tenant service representatives, TSR, that have had a pos positive effect on the safety in the housing communities. And whereas the HHS committee further supports OSLH's monthly meetings with DPS, CPS, and other 
tribal organizations and encourages each to update their memorandum of understanding MOU with those participating tribal organizations. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Tribal Council of the Oglalosu Tribe hereby enacts this resolution to support of the Oglalosu Lakota Housing Collaborative efforts to keep our communities safe as here and stated. And be it further resolved that the Tribal Council hereby authorizes the Tribal President or in his absence, the Vice President of the Oglalosu Tribe to sign any documents necessary and the certification. Motion. Motion by Richard Garnier. Again, <laughs> Green Wall, Cora White Horse, with the second. It's a first name question. Question. I'm trying to hurry up. I've got a lot on my mind. Okay, I have a few things. Um, I brought this to, to the attention yesterday. Um, currently, we have a motion or a resolution from the Wounded District to remove the current TSR from our district because he is violating people's rights. He's going into people's units at late hours of the night without a police officer. Um, they're taking kids to CPS without a CPS worker. Um, <coughs> if these, this is why I wanted to suspend OSLH is because there's a lot of violations going on out there. You don't live in the housing, I live in the housing and I see what's going on and I hear what's going on. And yes, we do have a lot of horseback riders that come through there, but those don't belong to housing uh, people. They believe, belong to people that have, are living in the country. So that belongs to law enforcement, not housing. Why are you gonna bring in, um, it's, it, this is gonna be a saturation. Regardless, it's still saturation. That's law enforcement. If we want saturation and law enforcement within OSLH, get Neighborhood Watch, our fine grants, because right now they're using the funding out of maintenance dollars to pay for all that overtime, for all of these TSRs to be working. And right now, their, financial, their financials are way in the red, and we all know that from that past meeting six months ago. We know that because we went to that meeting and that's the last follow-up we had with them. Nothing has been brought into the table to HHS. So a couple weeks ago, I went to Law & Order and I let Law & Order know that I wanted to request a meeting with HHS, Law & Order, Public Safety, Courts, CPS, and DPS. And today, this is here. Why wasn't that allowed? for me, for my, my community, my district, before it came, came here. Yesterday, you guys took, we all took out um, the executive director's office out of ICD, our IDC, without a plan, without anything in place, not even a resolution. When I brought it, it was denied. So what gives right here? What's going on? I think one of the biggest things is, um, right now I'm gonna make a motion to table this so that we do have that meeting and that we do get all those policies together so that we know we get the, the um, information from our attorneys that we're not violating, that there's policies showing that they have the money to spend for, um, for this saturation. Okay, so. Are you going to make a motion? After I give Darla Black the floor, Ms. Vice President Black. Come up here. Thank you, President Weston. That's what you were going to do anyway, right? Thank you, President Weston and Tribal Council. My office received numerous phone calls concerning a saturation patrol that happened in Manderson and Porcupine. What happened is people went into their homes at 10 o'clock at night. One lady called crying because her children were sleeping. Now, legally, there's a term of reasonable expe expectation of privacy. When you're in your home, you have that reasonable expectation of privacy. So I called housing, in a good way, and I spoke to one of the housing employees who invited me to a meeting that was going to happen on Monday. 
She said the attorney general and the chief of police are going to be here, so we invite you to come. So when I attended the meeting, we listened to a TSR because the attorney general wanted to know, what do you do when you patrol? And we sat there and we listened. And when he was done, I had several questions. One, they're using body cameras when they go into the homes of the people. Now remember, they have reasonable expectation of privacy. So I asked them, do you have policies and procedures that tell, that inform the tenants that they are being videotaped when you go into their residence? They didn't. Secondly, I asked, what does the role of CPS investigator play? Because the lady said there was a CPS investigator, a TSR, and a DPS worker that went there. They didn't have an answer. I asked for a policy and procedure to show what they do on this saturation patrol. Because for me, if you come to my house with a, a TSR, a CPS, and a DPS worker, you're enforcing. You're going to enforce something. So, and they couldn't answer that. While I was there, the CPS director requested for body armor for the investigators. And so my other question to them was, where do you draw the line here? Where do you draw the line between a TSR, a Department of Public Safety worker, and a Child Protection Service worker? Because all these things they spoke about are law enforcement. You're going to enforce the law. So they gave me, I asked, uh, I asked for a copy of their job description. I have their job description. There's nothing in there that authorizes them to enter their homes. Their only job is to help the tenants. And it went even further than that. I asked if all of this was in their code, the housing code, because I remember seeing one when I was a judge. It's not in their code. I asked for a copy of their memorandum of agreements. They didn't have any. They said they didn't have any. It hadn't been updated for a long time, and they said uh, Mr. Ironcloud was the one that organized this years back. So the concerns that I asked and I talked about with them was I asked them if they would stop and take it back and try to do policies and procedures and not only that, include the tenants, inform the tenants, because if you're going to go into their houses, search and seizure, you have to inform them. The judge signs off on a search and seizure document to go into somebody's home. So there has to be some way that you're going to have to look at this. You know, you could look at it as several ways. One, you can support the patrol of the areas, but when you start going into homes, then you are crossing some lines. And I do understand the mother with her children sleeping, because if my children were sleeping and three men were coming into my home, I would have concerns of that too. So there's got to be some parameters, and that's exactly what I told them at that meeting. There has to be some policies and procedures that are written to inform the tenants. You always have to work with the tenants. And they showed me a tenant service um, document where it says in there, and that's questionable, that they can enter your home at any time, day or night, and they don't have to inform you. And I think that document should be revisited too because these tenants do have civil rights. There are some civil rights here. So I just wanted, and I am compiling a report of everything that I have with all the documents for you after that meeting that I had attended. Thank you. Okay, so Collins Clifford. I attended our meeting in, in Manerson, our district meeting, and I respect people, and I, I respect that each and every one of our people in their homes have, have that constitutional right to be protected within their own home. With uh, making of rules and policies and being allowed to just go in any hour of the night with no notice, the law requires 
if I'm going to put a complaint in, that I, I have to be willing to write write it down, sign off on it, and testify to that fact. So, on, on the other hand, but them are our people's rights, and, and they shouldn't be violated. We're, this is not a dictatorship government, and I hope we work at not being a dictatorship government, because it, we're not a we're not a third country out where the United States is stepping in. We're here already. We've been here. We we've had enough uh, tragedy in our life from the United States government, let alone imposing certain things like trying to impose martial law. That's uh, kind of getting out of hand. But I, I too, you know, the the TSRs and a few other people need to get educated onto constitutional rights. It's a reality. You wouldn't want them coming into your home on somebody's phone call. They better have some proof. And and like uh, Miss Black said, you know, and I had an opportunity to visit Miss Black, you know, and we talked about it. Legally, these people do. They have to have somebody willing to testify. We we try to work with the feds to come in and do some things, and they said we need somebody to set that up, go in, buy, do all of this stuff. We couldn't just go in their homes. They refused to, to come in and do that. So, but our own housing program just arbitrarily does it. And and I don't think that's right. And I think our people do have that reasonable um, expectation to have that type of privacy. So, that I, I'm, I too um, would like to second her motion on tabling this until we can come up with some solutions, legal solutions, for visiting our tenants. Sonia right on, Weston Sonia. and Philip Goodcrow. Oh, and, and Cora. Did you? I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Only when I looked up, I was writing. But when I looked up, these two had their hands up. Okay, so well, it won't take me long this time, I promise. Motion. Um, motion. Okay, there. well, let's, let's finish this. I gave everybody a chance to speak the last time, so I'm going to give everybody a chance, and then we'll come back to your motion, okay? I, I don't know about other housings, but I know that the people, a lot of the people out to Sunrise, especially people who have children, they appreciate the saturation patrols. They appreciate them, them bringing police to see, you know, what's going on. There's, there's several, several, I don't know, people who feel safer with the, with the saturation patrols going on. And, and I realize that a lot of people don't want them in their communities, but um, I guess to each their own, you know. And, and um, there are issues, there's always issues when people, they have their own um, view of protection. But we also have to remember that those housing units, even though they are people's homes, are rental properties. They have agreements that they signed, rules that they're supposed to follow, and, and according, to, according to the Civil Rights Act, actually, if there is an emergency, a landlord is allowed to enter a, pro a property. If it's their property and there is an emergency, somebody calls and says there's a safety issue, they can enter. They can get there with the police and the police can act. And, and I don't know if you recall, but about maybe 12 years ago, <clears throat> they were trying to come up with a plan for housing because previous to these patrols, previous to housing going to open the doors, people would come to council and complain, the cops knocked my, my house door in, now who's going to pay for that? Because housing wouldn't pay for it because that was tenant caused damage. And we've been trying to work with housing to make them pay for tenant caused damage right now. But it was a huge expense when cops would go in and knock people's doors in because they wouldn't answer. And with the saturation patrols, it allowed the TSRs to go 
and open the doors for the police. <coughs> and it saved a lot of money. And we're always talking about saving money. There, I don't believe that <clears throat> there is a civil rights violation because they are rental units. They are rental units. They belong to the housing authority. Sorry, I'm trying to make a point here. There, and that's why I made a motion to do this. But that was only part of it. The TSRs came to our meeting that day. And they had several, several complaints about <coughs> threats. And I told them the process. I said, if you have a complaint on a council member or an executive board member, there's a process. You have to follow that process. You don't come to committee. There's a process. And um, their attorney was there, and she had their old MOUs. There's no end date on them. So they're still active. We told them to update them. That's what this is about, to support the saturation patrols and to tell them or authorize them to update their MOUs, but to continue to work together. That was it. Thank you. Thank you, um, <clears throat> Mr. President. You know, I think that uh, this has been an ongoing um, uh, concern I think across the reservation you know with uh, the with the housing doing the tenant patrols in all of the communities and the reason why I know is because you know being the past HHS committee chair there's times that the H the housing authority did come to our meetings last administration or the previous administration before that. And at the time, you know, the late uh, Paul Ironcloud uh, came to our committee meetings and addressed the committee on, on the big concern with the uh, uh, low income housing in all the nine districts. And a lot of times uh, we're getting on housing when something goes wrong with the home, when the community people are coming to <coughs> us complaining about the things that are happening in the cluster homes, you know, and the safety of their families. I mean, today we're dealing with uh, meth issues, uh, alcohol issues. I mean, today as leaders, you know, we, we, we try to put our heads together to figure out how could we help, the, help our people across the reservation so that we can have safe communities, bottom line safe communities. And I think that they took the effort to uh, to get together, you know, CPS, public safety, and housing, and there's other organizations that came together to figure out how they can address these issues in all the communities. So this is the effort of, uh, you know, the late Paul Ironclaw. I'm gonna say that today, you know, out of respect, because, you know, he really did a lot for housing, really did a lot, and he did a lot to make it safe. And although today we might not be happy with these TSRs, you know, I'm gonna have to say sometimes that they, um, they're putting out, they're putting themselves out there too, to provide the safety for the rest of your community people. So we have to look at it that way sometimes. And I know that sometimes in our communities, we might not uh, uh, agree with the way things are going, but the way this is, and the way I'm understanding it is, is that they wanna bring them together, they wanna work together to address those MOUs, to update them, which I don't feel there's no problem in doing that. We need to do that. And I will say a couple of weeks ago, in Law and Order Committee, uh, we did address an, an issue that uh, Vice President had talked about. And that came to our committee and we did address it. And at the time we had the Chief of Police sitting in the meeting. So he was also aware of what transpired. And yes, we have TSRs using the radios when they go into these houses. And the things that uh, happened with this certain case, we had to have him step in and work with <coughs> See, uh, Oglala Sioux Lakota housing and, and figure out, you know, what, what, what is their role and uh, making sure that we don't do what Lisa is saying, stepping, you know, out of lines. We need to work together to make sure that we were, we're not violating anybody's rights, but 
you know, Cora's right, you know, those are low income rentals and there's a contract that they all signed. And so when you sign that contract, you say, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this. And if you don't do it, that housing can come back and say what they're going to say. So again, this is a, co a collaborative effort and it's to provide safe communities for our people. And if it's not, it's not going that way and if we're, we're addressing it with, with the concerns that uh, Manderson has, then I think that that's why it has to be brought back together. And uh, housing, I think uh, this needs to maybe be a collaborative, not only with this group, but with the HHS committee and the Law and Order Committee need to be a part of it. And I think we need to sit down and we need to address that issue so that we're all on the same page when we leave from there. So I don't want to violate anybody's rights, but at the same time, we need to provide safe communities for our community people. Okay. Thank you. So I've got Philip, I've got Craig, I've got Stephanie, and then I'm gonna recognize your motion, Lisa. You forgot. Who? This guy was the first one. I've never seen his hand up. I don't even have you down. I, I don't know, I was looking at Cora. Philip, okay, uh, Craig. Chairman Vest, I'd like to uh, request a floor for Beverly Tuttle. Thank you, Councilman Philip and Council representatives here. You know, I um, try to attend a lot of meetings in my district, and I know I've attended many council meetings. A um, Couple of years ago, you guys had a big meeting in Rapid, and it was a collaborative effort that Sonia is talking about with housing. And I remember sitting there with all many of you there already, and the, the reason why that meeting came up was the concern of the MEP use in all of our districts. And I remember um, the late, and he is my relative, Paul Ironcloud, he stepped up and said, we need to have a meeting and address this. Remember that? Everybody was there that involved somebody who could represent safety, safe communities. <clears throat> so I think, I just kind of um, think that the meth is still around. If it's kind of went underground, nobody's talking about it too much. But there's still unsafety measures, at least in my district. I think it, once you experience trauma, and as an adult I did, where, you know, um, dysfunction happens and it scares you. So I really think, you know, um, protocol is probably what you're talking about here, is developing a strong protocol procedure with all of the collaboratives of um, agencies to come together. And I do know that uh, I did attend a meeting at housing with the, C um, those tenant patrols, or not tenant, um, what do they call those? Yeah, anyway, they were telling me the atrocities of what they experience, and you know, because neighbors call, go check this home out because there's a lot of stuff going on there. There's fighting, there's people carrying axes. I'm not kidding you. In some of these housing, it's really, really violent. And they risk their lives. So I really want to say that, you know, I think it, maybe Manderson is experiencing something that maybe is a personal thing of their district, but um, I think you shouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater is what I'm saying. Try to work together and develop protocol as a community member. I think that um, I live in a housing house too, and I think um, but I'm safe, but yet I feel unsafe living out in the country because I've been threatened before and it's traumatizing. Can you imagine what the little children go through when, you know, but that's to protect them. So I think there just needs to be really strong protocol for everybody to come together. Wopila, thank you. Craig Dillon. Boy, we sure forget quick on this reservation. <coughs> you know, we've had numerous drug-related deaths. People were shot in daylight over beat. An elderly couple was tied up in Sharps housing. You know, I think back on all of these issues and I think back of my good friend Paul, who's no longer with us. He was the one that established the fact that we should uh, have safe communities. And he took that, that initiative. And I was at that meeting she was at. And he was very emotional when he talked about this to start with. He talked about how grandmas 
had raised their children and their grandchildren, and now they are raising their great-grandchildren, and they're tired. I hope people didn't forget that, because to me that touched home, because I see it in my community. I see it across this reservation. You know, there's fentanyl that's out there now, and it's making its way to this reservation. And when that hits here, we're going to have a lot of deaths. There's, uh, we have a meth ep epidemic, we all know that. You know, are we sticking our heads back in the sand? Brown heroin, <coughs> coke, that's all here. And, and if we're going to sit around here and act like we don't believe that or don't know that, then we're spinning our wheels, people. You know, in my community, I support them saturation patrols 100% because I've seen the devastation that this happens. Drive through your housing projects. You have all those houses boarded up. That should tell you something, that the tenants are destroying those houses with the meth use that's going on in there. Grandmas and grandpas are getting having to be evicted because the houses are contaminated. It's not nothing that the housing created. The housing's playing catch up. And they're not doing a good job on it because more and more houses are being destroyed every day. So, you know, we have to stand strong against this epidemic or we're going to go down with the epidemic. And um, I haven't forgot those people that died in vain over bad deals that went bad. Uh, you know, it, well, our memory is too short. We're so used to stuff, bad stuff happening to us that we accept that. I, I'm not willing to accept that. And so uh, I want you to run the vote, Mr. Chairman, after Rich speaks, because he was the first one to have his hand up, but he was overlooked. But my thing is, is Paul had a vision, and it was a damn clear vision to me. And we need to straighten this up, because if we don't, people, we're going to lose. We're going to lose big time. And uh, what we're going to lose is our future, because of our children and grandchildren are getting hooked on this shit. So um, I, I'm, I'm just to the position now that we need this. We need it more today than we ever did. And, uh, you know, if the people don't want to be harassed and stuff, then, then clean up your act. That's what I'm saying. These guys could come to my house any time, day or night. I'd welcome them in. Because uh, I, I know the devastating effects. I've had friends and relatives that, that have lost their battle to this stuff. I had a nephew that passed away because of this crap. And so I don't, I'm not going to make any excuses for anybody that's uh, carrying on this lifestyle. Thank you very much. Stephanie, leisure. Okay, I'd just like to state that um, there is an eviction code in the civil code. I'm sorry, there's eviction laws in the civil code. And it is a court process that not only housing, but everybody should abide by, even our law enforcement. We have ordinances in place for our drugs and our alcohol, but we're where where's the people where's the people having their say having their um cooperation in reporting reporting these meth users these alcohol users the child abuse everything that goes on you know it's not just us it's it's a whole community our, our communities need to come together as one and, and all this devastation that's happening okay Oyate, let's start living better. You know, let's put it back on ourselves. Where's our responsibility in all of this? If I saw something like that, I'd be more than happy to call the police and report it. Or myself, I'd go and stop it and sit on that person and tell the police to get there. But that's what I choose to do. I'm not just going to go and hide and say it's not my problem. <coughs> but that's, that's the problem. Too many of, of us refuse to get involved. And this is where we're at. Um, so let's start taking our responsibility. Um, the, it, uh, with housing, the rental properties go, they have a court process to go through. So where even the courts, where are they at in this? You know, all these entities that are listed in this ordinance, where are they? Why haven't we seen any court documents, any case law? that we can go back on and say, okay, this case happened here and this is what happened. We need one case law that will set precedent so we can move forward. We're missing laws. We're missing things here. You know, all these people, yeah, yes, I agree, they need to come together, 
but let's do it right. It's about time we start cleaning up our act too. You know, we can't just sit here and blame everybody for whatever. It's everybody's problem. Everybody. Thank you. Lisa Jumpnigo de Leon. I'm not saying anything about any of the saturations. I'm talking about illegal activities that are happening within when it's um, TSR's responsibility um, to be a service representative to do rentals and updates and help people to live a better life. Instead, we have a lot of evictions going on within these houses. Um, I thought we were supposed to help our families. I thought that's our priority is to help our families and our children instead of losing our children to CPS and then who knows where they go, you know? So um, I like this resolution, but the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, whereas needs to come out so we can work on that. We really need to work on that. I requested it and nothing has come to the table. I've requested it with Law and Order and um, the committee chair is sitting here, you know, and <clears throat> so what is, what's going to happen? Are we going to, we're going to run the vote and then what happens? Are we going to come together and resolve this and work all together? Or are we going to just leave it and pass it and let them do this? Because if we don't keep our, our, he our hands in with this whole group, then we're going to lose focus like we always do. We always pass resolutions and, and never carry through with them. We never see the end results. We never see a final document, document until, uh, the plan until a year or so later. So um, my motion is to table this resolution. Okay, we have a motion to table. There's a second. Long time ago when you Hang on now. This yes or no? You were the second. Chairman. Okay, call for the vote, please. Chairman. You never did recognize this guy. I told him I would recognize him after this vote. No, you did. I told that to him and I told that to Davey. So it's a tabling motion. With a tabling motion takes precedent over any conversation. Call for the vote. Plain little thunder. Steam. Jim Meeks? No. Cora Whitehorse? No. Stanley Lil Whiteman? No. Austin Watkins? No. Chancey Wilson? No. Stephanie Leisure? Yes. Valentina Merdanian? Yes. Lydia Bear Killer? No. Ella John Carlo? No. Richard Greenwell? No. Philip Goodcrow? Yeah. David Puyer? No. Sonia Lilhawk Weston? Yeah. Jackie Sears? Uh huh. Colin C.J. Clifford? Who? Oh. Lisa Jumpinigo de Leon? Uh huh. Craig Dillon? No. <laughs> Did you say something, Jim? <laughs> Motion to table failed. Five yes, 13 no. Motion to approve resolution as is. We have that. We already have that right here. We have Richard and Cora. Now we can we, we can recognize Richard right now. I guess, uh, President, uh, we wanted to see if it would be okay, uh, Cora, if we could add in the amendment to include the Law and Order Committee and the HHS Committee, and so that we can sit down and collaboratively work on the MOUs, and that maybe at this time we can include the languages or whatever that we need to put in there and making sure that uh, we're going to stay <laughs> focused on the safety of the communities. But again, at the same time, we want to make sure that we're not violating anybody's rights. 
So with that uh, being said, Cora, is that okay to add our committees on it? Two committees? Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Do you need to put the courts on yeah. there? No, just you the didn't two. say anything about the courts. Well, we could add the courts on there too. The courts, That's OST courts. Um, law and order. Yeah, law and order committee and the HHS committee. Okay. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's okay. Fine. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think um, it's obvious that it's election time. Um, people right now can call one of us, and whatever they say is gold. It doesn't matter. It's like God told them that that's happened, and that's the truth. People don't want you to have videotapes on, because why? Because you caught them in the act of doing something they shouldn't have been doing. They're misbehaving. They're doing things like that. The Housing Authority has taken in Vice President Darla Black's um, opinion. They have an attorney that's there helping them work on policies and policy review. And that stuff will come to us and come to our committee and our working group. There is things that have happened in the past, and I'm talking years down, because this isn't just started. This happened before 2010. There has been court cases thrown out because of certain things that were happening. Those things have been fixed. Those, you can't just enter a home. The housing just doesn't come and, and knock down your door or open the door unless there's an emergency. That's it. They come to your house, they knock on the door to introduce yourself. Last week, one of, the, one of these ladies came to the uh, Law and Order Committee and said, A, B, C, and D, and this is what they did. Well, guess what? I got the video. None of that happened. They blamed the TSR for coming in. They were, of course, yeah, TSR was with CPS. But what did we, what did we do here? Back then, we developed CPS, law and order, uh, law enforcement, housing authority would come together as a team to address some of these issues in our communities, from from child neglect and abuse to the alcohol, the drugs, um, the vandalism, the units being damaged, all these different things that are happening in your community. The tribe supported that. Polly Ironclad's vision was something that we all supported. This is what this is trying to do. Of course there's going to be lumps along the road, but when we interject politics into things like that because we want to bolster ourselves in front of our constituents, sometimes that's not healthy for this group of people that are trying to make something happen for our communities. I witnessed in Wombly, back in 2012, there was two officers at a house. There was a fight going on, two houses. There had to be 30 people outside going at it. There's two police officers pulled up before housing got there, and they all had them surrounded. They had these two police officers surrounded in the middle. And housing authority came out. You should have seen that when she come out of the door with her stick. Boy, she started cracking it. She even had to throw the French word around a few times, which surprised me. Boy, you should have seen all them young adults hauling butt for their houses. Get your butt back in this house. If housing authority didn't come, then two officers would have probably really got beat on. There would probably been people going to prison for that. But a lot of times, it's just a mere fact that they pull in your community with their housing sign on the side of their, their vehicle, people start behaving. <coughs> so guess what? In some of these communities, we, we see people, tribal employees, going to all the drug dealers' houses, hey, housing's in, housing's in this community, ratting on housing for being there so all the drugs move out there before law enforcement come into town. You know, that happens. We understand that. But I think um, sitting down with our two commun uh, committees when we have time, it's easy to say we never meet on this, we never meet on that. You guys are all in the same place as I have been. Every week it's something new that pops up that interrupts what we're trying to do too. So we're trying to do things, but in the meantime, this allows them to continue to work with one another, it allows them to work through some of these things that are happening, you know, and you can't always just listen to one side of the story. People in your communities will lie to you, straight face. Then you pull a video out that protects the housing worker that shows that didn't happen, but nobody goes back and says, geez, you really embarrassed me. You lied and, and, and made me look like a fool. Nobody goes back and says that. To them, they just let it go. Why don't we start punishing our, our, our scolding people when they come and lie to us like that? You know, that never happens. But I think 
This here is a good thing. Let's come together. I mean, right now we don't have enough law enforcement. We know that, our communities know that. And sometimes it's just that TSR driving through the community makes a difference. Back in the day, there was 120 officers, TSRs, and there was probably 500 neighborhood watch people at that time. Our communities worked together at one time, foot patrolling. You remember there was a big grant, that block grant that came out on that? We did do this at one time, our communities. But it's a different day and things are different. But I'd like to see this move through, Chair. Dave Puyer and Lisa Jump Niggle, then we'll run the vote. Mr. Jim, you know, I'm glad it's election time because everybody's been making a mean speech. You know, uh, years ago, they had the foot patrol. But you know what I see, what's going on now? We don't respect one another. It's all due to the lack of respect. You see families fighting families. Within the family, and that's sad. And they put, try and put us in the middle to break it up. Kids are running wild. And I'll say it again, I probably said it before, saying it sounded like a broken record. Evergreen housing, when it was first started, right by the first house that went in, there used to be a siren on there. At nine o'clock, the siren went off, everybody went to bed. The kids went to bed, the old people went around, and made sure everybody went to bed. The lights were on, they tapped on the door, told them, shut the lights off and go to bed. People respected that. Now, if you're not up in your house all night long, something's happening. You know, we, it's just that we've got to respect. I'm one of the victims, of one of the people that's raising grandkids and great-grandkids. That is true what's going on out there. But we can't let our little ones go to CPS and drift off into some other neighborhood either. But it's all respect. That's why I stand up every time I speak to you. Guys, I respect each and every one of you. When I first got on a council, I was scolded. When I first got on a council, I was told to remove my cap or my hat. Because your families are proud of you sitting in this circle, the person sitting up here. You know, we beat this thing to death. We want, and I, I, my cousin, God bless his soul, wanted safe communities. But we're beating it to death like we don't want safe communities. With that, I move that we close discussion and move on. So, Thank you. We close discussion. We don't need to do it anymore. We have a vote on a motion and a second. Yeah. Call for the vote, please. Lay little thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Quar White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Yes. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Oh, uh huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Oh, huh. Collins C.J. Clifford. How oh, with the amendment. Lisa Jumpinigo Dalion. Uh -huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Unanimous 18. Motion approved. 18 yes, zero no. We are at number 18. Take chair. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe requiring all tribal programs to reconcile accounts with their accountant and that all tribal programs must provide a quarterly financial report to the respective com committee. Whereas the Ogallaw Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935 in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. 5123, 
Under, and under Article 3, Section 1 of the Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Ogallala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Tribal Constitution authorizes the Ogallala Sioux Tribe, our Tribal Council, in Article 4, Section 1W, empowers the tribe to enact resolutions and ordinances in the best interest of the tribe and its membership. And whereas the Health and Human Services Committee, HHS, Committee is a standing committee of the Tribal Council that oversees tribal programs that provide services to our tribal membership. And whereas the HHS Committee met on April 17, 2018 and was informed that some programs have overspent and that a, a mechaniz, uh, mechanism had to be established to prevent programs from overspending. And whereas the HHS Committee has determined that the tribal programs must be financially responsible and to act, enact restraints upon spending, especially when funds are unavailable. And whereas the HHS committee discussed methods to ensure tighter budgetary control and recommends that all tribal programs must reconcile accounts with the accountant for accurate financial statements. And whereas the HHS committee further recommends that all programs must report to the committee and provide a quarterly report to the respective committee. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Tribal Council of the Ogallosi Tribe hereby directs all tribal programs must reconcile their accounts with their accountants and further directs that all tribal programs report to the respective committee quarterly. And be it further resolved that the Tribal Council hereby authorizes the Tribal President, or in his absence, the Vice President of the, tri of the Ogallosi Tribe to sign any documents necessary. Motion. Motion by Richard Greenwald, seconded by Cora Whitehorse. We have a question, Chancey Wilson. My turn for a speech. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I just want to know if it should be an ordinance instead of a resolution. That's up to the committee. I think if we're going to order we it. want to go with Tina Merdanian, Sonia, and then I'll give my to Courtney. To Courtney. Okay. Well, let's give uh, Tina Merdanian first. Okay. Just quick question. I know we want to be all fiscally responsible in, in your resolution, your fourth whereas, that the HHS committee met on April 17, 2018, and was we informed. And, and I guess looking at that, that chain of command, who informed you? and whose responsibility to secure those mechanisms and enforce those mechanisms came from the executive director with the programs. So just to, to um, clarify that, I just I want to make sure that in this resolution, if we're making this an ordinance, that <clears throat> what is the mechanism and who's enforcing it? Um, I don't know that I was at this meeting, Lydia. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you chaired this meeting. Yeah. Um, so will you respond, please? Okay, so no, when this came up, it was uh, one of our programs. And um, we the, the recommendation was that the accountant and the program director and the AD sit down together and reconcile their um, cuff accounts. Because when it came to us, the program was almost like 100000 in the red. And the committee, we didn't have the financial reports because that process is ad administratively. So we kept approving um, the amounts that she brought to purchase and purchase. And we kept approving it. And we didn't have the financial accounts that the, um, administratively they had it. And so it, when they were, in the red, they came back to the committee and just put it on us. So like we failed and went in debt. So, so with that, there is this resolution was recommended that the accountant, the director, and that the AD are to uh, reconcile every month so that they would, they, our programs won't get into any financial um, mismanagement or go in the red. So that's, that's the intent of this resolution, and I don't think it should be a law. 
but I think it's a resolution and the enforcement would be um, that we make sure that those directors and the accountants bring those reports to the committee. Sonia Weston. Yield the floor to uh, one of my district members. Um, I agree with the accountability part, um, but the one thing I, I hope you do add is, um, I, is it gonna be monthly or quarterly? I think it should be monthly. They, okay. they reconcile, but then they should at least come to the committee quarterly. Okay, if, if it's quarterly to add in there that the accountant um, have that 425 available because that is that is part of 638 that we do quarterly financials and I, I don't have a problem with that but I know they're not going to have it done monthly I mean we can give you our reports monthly but I know yeah the cuff accounts but the quarterly 425s the accountant should have that there and that's as per the financial management manual. I think we could insert that where the last where, whereas, right before, therefore, be it resolved, where it says quarterly report, maybe we could insert that, that language with the 425. But the 425s aren't done monthly. They're done quarterly. 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 Okay, we have Jackie Sears and then Richard Greenwald. And then we'll run the vote. You know, um, we, we went through this uh, indirect cost. We approved it. And we have all these positions in there. We have an accountant that it goes through. If there's money there, they sign off on it. If there's no money, they shouldn't sign off on it. You know, we're paying big bucks here. Did you look at the budget? We have a contracts office. That should have been stopped if there's no funding, you know? They look at the sign-off from the accountant. We have a comptroller. I looked at these salaries, and they get, they get big bucks, and we're not holding people accountable. Yet we have to pass a resolution to, to um, help them do their jobs. We're doing it backwards. We need to start addressing these higher-ups now. These programs are paying, uh, what do you call it, about 40-some um, percent indirect cost. You know, that's, that's my thing here. I, I, I just don't agree with passing another resolution when we still, we need to hold people accountable now. They, they go through all these chains. When's it going to stop? You have an executive director that was going through all this. He made it, took it upon himself to approve everything. Then it went on to the accountant. Then it went on to so-and-so and so-and-so so like that. How many people did it go through at allowing someone to overspend $100,000? When there's a program that doesn't have money, according to our policy, they're supposed to be shut down. But no, we carry them and carry them, and general fund picks up the budget, the, the debt, <laughs> but we allow it because we don't hold people accountable. So I'm not gonna support this because I think people need to be held accountable instead of passing these resolutions. Richard Greenwald. Chair, I agree with, I agree with Jackie. I mean, I think it needs, maybe we made make an ordinance where they're ordered to, we're basically ordering them to do what they're supposed to be doing already, which is in the financial management system or the policies and procedures. But even today, we had a program that was here today that we had a bunch of questions for. Well, guess what? That program has turned in no 425s for the whole year. And and we come to committee meetings and we're given all these. I mean, we don't get reports. I, I've been asking since four years ago, how come we don't come to our committees and kind of give us a day, update of what, what are you working on? What are your... What are your goals for the year? And you know, we'd like to see you guys maybe expand or do something. You know, kind of give them some, some, uh, some of our goals and vision as tribal council, but not to micromanage them or anything. But when when that came to us, and and I was there, they came to us over and over. We need this approved for for supplies. We need this for uniforms. We need this, for, and it was just getting signed off and signed off. Yeah, there's money available. 
I think it was more like two hundred thousand dollars they were in the red. You know, and 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 for us it's like a slap in the face because even their the upstairs was telling us they had money. You remember that? So I think this is just a way to put some concrete concrete in it, and I'd like to see um, more of the programs that are under HHS committee to come and give me a report. We always we're always put on the spot to go to TBAC and other meetings in D.C. to fight for dollars. But yeah, you know what? The last few times that we went, Cora went to TBAC, and Courtney could test, testify to this and anybody else. We couldn't get documents. It was like the last second they were trying to scramble to get a report to us so we could fight for dollars for them. If I don't have information on your program, I can't help you. So why aren't them programs reporting to us a lot earlier? Why ain't they giving us their stats for the last five years to tell us this is where we're at from this year to this year to this year? This is what we do. This is what we need help with. And this is what our budget is. Those are the things I'd like to see in committee, you know. And, and this, I hope, would address some of that. This would hopefully address some of that. Make an ordinance so they have to come to our committees. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. So we're going to make it an ordinance. Motion is <laughs> I was just going to run the vote. Well, I'm trying to, you, unless you want to table it. We have a motion by Richard Greenwald and a second by Cora to, to approve that. And the more we discuss it, the more people are throwing stuff in. The resolution is just saying we're going to do something, and that's what this is. We already have a financial management policy. That's the order. That's up to the motion maker. Motion maker. Richard. There, she's contesting your making it an ordinance. Do you want to do it? Do you want to keep it a resolution then? Uh, yeah. I'm okay with that. All right, resolution. All right. Call for the vote, please. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yeah. Corey Whitehorse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Yes. Chancey Wilson. No. Stephanie Leisure? No. <clears throat> Valentina Mardanian? Yeah. Lydia Bear Killer? Yes. Ella Giancarlo? No. Richard Greenwell? Yes. Philip Goodcrow? Oh. David Puyer? Yes. Sonia Lilhawk Weston? Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears? Yeah. Collins? CJ Clifford? Yeah. Lisa Jumping Eagle? Dalion? Yeah. Craig Dillon. Yes. One more. Motion did carry. Eleven yes, seven no. Number nineteen, Chairman. Secretary, can you read nineteen, please? Resolution of the Oglossi Tribe of Council of the Oglossi Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Oglossi Tribe approving the contract with Tom Construction for the Red Shirt Landfill Phase 2 expansion on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Whereas Oglossi Tribe is organized in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 on December 14, 1935, 25 U.S.C. 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws and under Article 3 of the Oglossi Tribe's Constitution, the Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglossi Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Section 1A, to negotiate with the federal government on behalf of the tribe in Section 1F, 
to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the tribe in section 1G to appropriate for public purposes of tribe any available tribal council funds and in section 1W to protect and promote the health and general welfare of the Oglossi tribe and its membership and whereas under the terms of a memorandum of agreement between the tribe and the Indian Health Service bids were sought for the closed construction of the red shirt landfill phase three expansion on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and whereas in the bid, bid letting an evaluation conducted under the MOA and involving the Tribal Solid Waste Management Program and the Indian Health Service, five bids were received. And whereas on the 15th day of May 2018, the Health and Human Services Committee of the Tribal Council met and voted to forward the final approval of a contract with PACE Construction onto the full Tribal Council. And whereas the Tribal Council has considered the matter and determined that it is in the best interest of the tribe and its members to approve the contract with Han Construction. Is Pace and Han two, two no, contracts? It's, it's, a, it's a phase two expansion. But like it says Pace Construction. Is that correct there? We need some clarification. On the fifth, whereas? He's here. It says, uh, James, James, come up and explain that portion of it. Um, do you want me to finish reading or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get correct. Okay. Go ahead. Whereas the tribal council has considered the matter and determined that it's in the best interest of the tribe and its members to approve the contract with Han construction for the red shirt landfill phase two expansion. Now, therefore, be, be it resolved that the Tribal Council of the Glossy Tribe does hereby approve the contract with Han Construction for the construction of the Red Shirt Landfill Phase 2 expansion in, a, in the amount of $518,220. And it doesn't say, I don't have a second page. No, no, it's just a certification. So it's just a period after that dollar amount. Does it should it have that the president is authorized to execute the contract? Yeah. Okay, and then on um, the third whereas it says phase three expansion. Is that phase three or phase two? Okay. So that pace construction is correct? It's just a typo. So it should be on. Yeah, on. Yeah. So it's on. Yeah. So we take pace out of there? Yeah. Eliminate all pace. Yeah. Okay. 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 No, no, we didn't get a motion. We need a motion. Motion by Lydia Bear Killer, seconded by Cora Whitehorse. Question Tina Merdanian. In regards to the Redshirt landfill, I believe um, there's there was about three. a couple resolutions and an ordinance regarding the landfill. And this has been a discussion, especially in Retro Table, for a while. Given the past circumstances at the landfill, and reading over that ordinance, it's to exist within a certain, for a certain time frame, and to be filled within that time frame, but never in the ordinance did it talk about expansion. So in regards to that, I'm asking and I'm requesting that the attorney research 
that ordinance for that landfill before this is passed. Because in regards to that law that's in place, you know, it, it's important that, you know, we look back and, and, and abide by the laws that we put into place. That's my motion. We have, we already have a motion. You have a motion to table. Okay, we have a motion to table. And second by? I'm going to second it, but I have a comment. Okay, well. comment. Uh, second, and then you have a comment. Then we're going to vote. In addition to what um, Ms. Mordanian had said here, that the site where the area is, it sits on a sacred site, the Old Woman Hill. So with regard to the researching, I believe that should be researched as well and maybe get TIPO involved. You know, here we are fighting the Black Hills and everything that's going on up there. And yet within our own tribal lands, we, we're trying to expand something that and violate another ordinance. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion. Call for the vote, please. No, we already ran it. Well, I'm running around. Blaine Little Thunder. Upstate. Jim Mix. Cora Whitehorse. No. Stanley Little White Man. Not there. Austin Watkins. No. Chancey Wilson. No. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian, yes. Lydia Bear Killer, no. Ella John Carlo, no. Richard Greenwell, no. Philip Goodcrow, yeah. David Puyer, Sonia Lillehawk Weston, yeah. Jackie Sears, oh, uh huh. Colin CJ Clifford, oh. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Uh huh. Craig Dillon. No. Motion to table did fail. Five yes. Nine no, one abstain, and two not voting. So then we have a motion to approve. Are you ready? Just comment. Comment. You know, th that's a cultural site that's important to our people and, and to the future generations. And we're just going to desecrate our sacred sites? Are we forgetting where we come from and who we are? So if you guys want to go ahead and pass it, go ahead. But this is going to be a protest from Redger Table in Oglala District. I'm going to recognize you now. I just needed to have to do the tabling motion first. You know what? Um, Lydia and then Richard. We brought we brought this, and and when this came to the committee, they had their documents to support this, and and also the EIS and that cultural um um assessment was done and both parties um did bring the documents where it's not affecting this um this cultural site that she's referring to and, and as a matter of fact both the tipo and um the director of uh, solid waste brought forward that it's not going anywhere near what she's referring to so I think, you know, if we're at the committee meetings and we're dealing with these issues, we would understand it. And, and so I, I don't agree that we are desecrating anything and then that, that money was identified and brought. If, if this was an issue back then, it should have came forward before the money was obligated. And now the obligation and the whole process went through, the bidding process went through, and we're ready to complete the phase two of this construction. So I just wanted to put that on record. I, I am not desecrating anything, and I don't, I don't feel like we need to be 
um, using that against each other in our circle. Thank you. Richard Gar uh, Greenwald. Chair, I'd like to um, ask James to come up and explain this uh, phase two and this next cell that's coming into to this phase. So it could give our uh, listening audience uh, some comfort that due diligence was done on this project. Good afternoon, Council. To start, as far as the uh, as old, old woman view, uh, when the landfill was first placed there, there was no mention of that. And I will, I will state that. When we, when we went to, went to consider the expansion, uh, Old Woman Butte was brought to our attention. And actually, it was brought to our attention probably in the mid-2000s. Uh, we've had Quality Services Incorporated, the archaeologist out of Rapid City that's used quite extensively by the tribe. They've done research on the area. We've had Mike Catches out there, and the butte will not be touched. It will be fenced off. It will be made clear to the contractor and anyone else out there that they will not cross that fence line. They will stay away from that area. Uh, it's been made clear to us, and as I said, we'll make it clear to everybody out there. They won't go, they won't go towards that area. It will be fenced off. It will be left alone. Uh, that's Old Woman Butte. As far as the area and expansion, in the late 1990s, when we set that up, we set the original area, the original cell was 15 acres, and then another area, which is also 15 acres, where the second cell is going. We laid that out, knowing that the original cell was going to last probably about 15 or 20 years. And so we knew we were going to have to have another area of expansion. That entire area was cleared as far as archaeological was concerned back in, the, back in the late 1990s. And again, like I said, by QSI for this, for this coming project. So I would like to think that we've done our due diligence. I'm willing to listen to the community if they have, I mean, if they have more uh, recommendations that they want us to follow. I'm willing to do that, but I do want to move this. I want to move the, co the contract forward, the construction forward. The cell that they're in right now is nearing overtopping, and we need to get going on that next cell. Craig Dillard. I was on the council when it was determined that was going to be the site, and there was a lot of uh, band, banter back and forth over that. And uh, I, I believe Wilmer went out there and even had Oliver, the late Oliver Red Cloud out there. And they approved that site out there. That's why it's out there. Uh, I think if we go back and look in the council and uh, through the minutes and everything, uh, because at one time they wanted to move that, that current dump trash site out there to the tribal ground that's over in uh, Nebraska. Do you guys remember that debate? That was a big issue over that. They, but they did because of the haul out there and the expense. But based on the information and approval of those guys back then, that's why it's out there. And I think if we research that, we could prove that they, they are the ones that reviewed that and said it was OK. I remember all of the, the heated debates that happened on this floor over the, where that was going to be put. So. Based on, on uh, that, uh, their opinions and stuff, that's why it was put there. And, and I would like somebody to research that so it, we can put it to rest that that's the way it happened or, or it wouldn't be there. And that was, that's what was trying to be done within the tabling motion, but maybe you can add yeah. that into this one yeah. to do, do the do due diligence, research that history, and add it into this resolution for affirmation? It's, there should be a record someplace of this. And if, if uh, geez, I hope I ain't the only one that remembers this. <laughs> but uh, uh, do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, you was a, the. I was the engineer on the first, on the yeah. first cell. And uh, there was a heated debate. It was time and time it got canceled. I mean, different sites were chose, but 
based on those guys' opinion, that's why it's out there. That's and right. I think Kim Clausen was the head of, uh, what was that? Environmental protection. Yeah, environmental protection back then. And uh, they did their homework, and that's why it's there. Okay. We, we need to hold up. We're not seeing a contract here. Where is it? Um, all I have on there is a bid and the licenses. Um, unless somebody has a copy of the contract, but my copy doesn't have a contract with it. The bid would be attached um, in in past past resolutions we haven't we haven't attached the contract um that's my problem is that in the past things were done that were not properly executed and so when we have contract modifications and i'm trying to go back to find the original contracts a lot of the contracts are not on file and um to make sure that we have all our contracts our documents on file for this administration, I am requesting to have all the properly executed documents on file, please. Jackie Sears. I would also like to see the TIPO report attached so that we would know. I'd like to see it in writing. Thank you. Sonia Weston. I guess my question to uh, Mr. Begaman is, is there a, a startup time with this project? When is it supposed to start? Will you? The idea was that we would start as soon as possible. Um, if, if we were able to get approval of the contract today, We'd have, we'd have signatures, we'd, we'd bring in the copy of the contract. We've always made sure that there were four signed copies of the contract. We provide one copy to the contract's office. We make sure that there's one contract left at the president's office. One contract gets left with the tribal program, and the other contract gets sent up to Aberdeen for, for final signature, for fun, not signature, but for approval, review and approval. So I guess, um with what the secretary is requesting for, as well as, um, I'm sure you have the, all, all, all of that, have the TIPO report? Yes. That shows, do you have a copy of that? Yes. Could you get that to her, as our, and to us, as well as whatever she's needing? It can be brought to the secretary's office tomorrow morning and emailed okay. out. Okay. Well, if you can do that, then I think that should be no problem. So but I think council comfortable with just passing this without looking at the contract? Is the contract attached? There is no contract attached. It's, it's a, a bid. bid it's a bid. So where's the contract then? The contract is in the bid package. Uh, and the only thing I can say is that I haven't been required to bring that. Obviously, I will make sure that that happens in the future. And the contract Again, will be provided to the secretary's office tomorrow so that it can be distributed to the council. Along with the, along with the, uh, the report from QSI. Motion to approve. We have, we have a motion. It was already a motion, but we were questioned. We have a motion and a second. And that's okay with... That's okay at the council. That's okay with the motion maker and the second. Lydia is the motion maker and the second was by Cora. Yes, he's gonna bring it into Donna and the president's gonna have to sign it anyway. Okay. Call for the vote, please. I was just going to add that I will bring in um, 
if you go on YouTube and uh, type in Old Woman Hill or Butte, and Mr. Messeth is on there, and in his words, he said he did not. He did not approve of that. Cover the vote, please. Yes, you can. There you go. Plain little thunder. Yeah. Jim Mix. Yes. Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. Yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chauncey Wilson. No. Stephanie Leisure. No. Valentina Merdanian. Yeah. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Yeah. David Puyer. Yeah. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Yeah. Jackie Sears. Yeah. Colin C.J. Clifford. Yeah. Lisa Jumpin' Eagle Dalion. Yeah. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion did carry. Ten yes, eight no. So that'll be it for HHS. So now I have a question for council. We still have law and order, and we still have finance committee. The part of mine is, is not on there. We did the consultation secretaries. We've got the treasurer, the fifth member, and then we've got all of the unfinished business and the two thirds. Do we want to continue to go till late tonight or just all come back on next Tuesday? And before, before, before we go, I was just, uh, what, what second? But just before, before I go, I was handed this by the vice president and she asked me if I would bring this up, and it's a nomination form for the Nobel Prize for Chief Orville Looking Horse. Do we want to deal with it now, or shall I bring it back on Tuesday? All we are is just doing a motion that, uh, with resolution supporting this process. Motion. Motion by Stanley Little White Man, seconded by Tina Merdanian. That needs to be read. <laughs> it's just on the sample form. We can put it on ours. Whereas the Quakers represented by their two great relief organizations, the Friends Service Consul in London and the American Friends Service Committee in Philadelphia were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1947 because the Quakers have shown us that it is possible to translate into action what lies deep in the hearts of many, compassion for others and the desire to help them, that rich expression of the sympathy between all men, regardless of nationality or race, which transformed into deeds must form the basis for lasting peace. For this reason alone, the Quakers deserve to receive the Nobel Peace Prize today, but they have given us something more. They have shown us the strength to be derived from faith and the victory of the spirit over force. Whereas, since they are Nobel laureates, the Quakers nominate others for the Nobel Peace Prize each year. Whereas, Richard Ironcloud Oglalakota has proposed Chief Arvo Looking Horse, Keeper of the Sacred White Buffalo Calf Pipe for nomination by the Quakers. Whereas Chief Arvo Looking Horse 
became keeper of the sacred white buffalo calf pipe bundle at the age of 12. Whereas Chief Arva Looking Horse embodies the teachings of the white buffalo calf woman and those that come with the enormous responsibility as keeper of the white buffalo calf pipe bundle. Whereas Chief Arva Looking Horse was one of the founders of the Chief Bigfoot Memorial Ride to Heal the Seventh Generation. Whereas Chief Arva Looking Horse has dedicated his life to prayer and ceremony to bring healing and peace to the Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota people. Whereas Chief Arva Looking Horse has carried this message of healing and peace out into the world. Whereas Chief Arva Looking Horse, after receiving instruction and ceremony, has visited the United Nations many times and has gone into areas where there is war to pray and bring a message of peace. Whereas Chief Orva Looking Horse went to New York City after the planes flew into the World Trade Center where he did the wiping of the tear ceremony for all those who lost loved ones in this tragedy. Whereas Chief Orva Looking Horse has focused on the protection and healing of Unchi Maka as essential to healing and peace. Whereas Chief Arvo Looking Horse has listened, followed, and supported the vision of the children to protect the water from the Dakota Access Pipeline. Whereas Chief Arvo Looking Horse supported the wa water protectors with prayer, ceremony, and mentorship, counseling the importance of staying in ceremony during resistance actions and the practice of nonviolence at all times. Whereas Chief Arva Looking Horse reminds us that the Creator needs each one of us to bring peace and that at this time of crossroads, there are no unnecessary people. The blank tribe, Oglas Sioux tribe, yep. supports the placement of Chief Arva Looking Horse into consideration as a Quaker nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize. And we have a motion and a second. Secretary, call for the vote. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Jim Meeks. <clears throat> Cora White Horse. Yes. Stanley Little White Man. <clears throat> yes. Austin Watkins. Oh. Chancey Wilson. Oh. Stephanie Leisure. Yes. Valentina Merdanian. Uh -huh. Lydia Bear Killer. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. Richard Greenwell. Yes. Philip Goodcrow. Oh. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Lilhawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Uh -huh. Collins CJ Clifford. Oh. Lisa Jumpin Eagle Dalion. Uh -huh. Craig Dillon. Yes. Motion carried. Unanimously, 18 yes, zero no. Thank you, Council. Stephanie, you want to say something before we ask for a closing prayer from Mr. Chancey Wilson? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to say that here we are scheduling a council meeting for next Tuesday, and that Tuesday, I know it's a constitutional meeting, but we just had complaints tonight with regard to our regular committee meetings, and that's the day of HHS. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. We need, uh, I need a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Or we do, do we want to recess? Okay, if we recess, we can just close with the prayer. Okay, we are recessed at 6.05. Continue, Chancey. Takashla, thank you for the beautiful day. Thank you for gathering and looking after all of our elders, our youth, and our, our animals throughout this reservation. Thank you for the rain.